All right, thanks everybody who's here. Whether you're watching live, you're watching the recording later on. This is Support AI Survivor Season 4, our wild card game. If you're new to this, what this means is these are all leaders that survived the initial rounds but did not finish in the top two to make it onto the playoffs. We have exactly two playoff spots left that will go to the winner and the second place finisher in this game. But these are all kind of leaders who couldn't quite get it done in the first game. And this is basically their last chance overall. So here's our overall map. This is one of our typical Pangeas. This one seems a little bit smaller in terms of how the land came out. I will go through and highlight which leaders we have in this game. In the northwest, we have Saladin of Arabia. In the north central, we have Surya Varman of the Khmer, who we've changed to a yellow color to distinguish him from the rest of the field. In the northeast, we have Ragnar of the Vikings. In the southeast, we have Mao of uh, China. Mao is the pregame favorite. About half of the people in our picking contest have picked him to finish in first place, as I also have. Down here in the south central part of the map, we have Wang Khan of Korea, who is a fan favorite. He is the also the favorite in this game to be first to die in the picking contest, so we'll see if that happens. And over here in the southwest, we have Churchill of England. We have a lot of protective leaders in this game, which is going to be interesting. And the other thing I need to mention is this is the one and only game we do with Raging Barbarians. So keep that in mind, Raging Barbs. There's going to be barbarians everywhere, so keep an eye out on that. All right, so let's keep an eye out for who's going for religion. No one going for an early religion. Look at this. Wang Khan fooled us. He was on religion first, but he swapped off it. He's going for hunting, which is not a bad decision. Um, and everybody else is going for reasonable stuff. Saladin and Wang Khan are the ones who are most likely going to found their religions. Saladin, though, has a triple seafood start, so he's researching fishing. And I guess Wang Khan wanted to connect his, um, his ivory. So let's see where their free deity starting settlers are going. Wherever you see the little archers, that's where the settlers are going. And we'll just, looks like Ragnar's going east. Most of the others look to be going into the middle of the map. Except Mao, he went to the south. All right, so we've got our first set of cities planted. Let's see where they're going to end up. Uh, so Saladin went to the southeast. He picked a good spot. Um, he doesn't. He has so much food at his capital, he can split off some of these resources. Double food resource, uh, dry rice, pigs, and another ivory. Not bad. He can share the ivory. I like that spot, even though it doesn't claim a ton of land. So Yavarman went to the southwest, so he's relatively close to Saladin. He does not have his food bonus in first ring, but he's creative, so he's going to grab the corn anyway, and then he'll have marble. That could be bad, getting marble, though. Might get him into excessive wonder territory. We'll see. He does have a nice capital in terms of resources, and he is correctly researching agriculture as his first tech. Uh, so Raman does start with mining, so he will be able to connect his gold resource and then connect his two food reef bonuses. So looks good there. Uh, Mao went to the southeast. This is not a great city site for him. However, he has so many floodplains tiles that he will have plenty of food. And he did get the double production, double hammer plant here um, on top of the plains hill tile. So that helps. The one thing he can do is he can farm the floodplains tiles. And this is one place where being expansive is actually going to be helpful because he has so many floodplains, he's going to run into health problems, but he's expansive, so he gets plus two uh, health in all his cities, and that actually is going to be meaningful here, because all otherwise his cities would be unhealthy. All right, let's see where the other leaders plant. Ragnar went to the east coast. It's not a bad city. Three floodplains makes for a solid spot, but he doesn't really claim much land with this one. He probably would have done better to go towards the middle of the map. Like, if he planted his city over here, or, um, like, at the copper plus... Uh, rice, that would have been pretty good, but he can't see the copper yet, doesn't have bronze working, keep that in mind. And Churchill and Wang Khan have not settled yet. So Wang Khan made a kind of a bold play for the middle of the map with this city. It's a good spot, especially after it expands borders and grabs the, the wet corn. Um, and he is going for the monument, so he could get that. Also, if he founds um, a religion, then that could be a pretty good spot because he'll get the free culture he would even get the gems in range relatively quickly because he'd get to 100 culture and then grab that. Churchill, a much weaker spot. This is a pretty terrible city. One tile off the coast, no food bonuses, jungle everywhere, research, working a 2-1 forest tile for his initial start. So not that great. I will say this. If Wang Kun can hold this city, it's a it's a good spot. If he, if he can't hold it, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. So... All right, anyone going for a religion? Saladin's not going for an, uh, an early religion here either. Yeah, the settlers will take forever. Um, a lot of the leaders, this is just something the AI does. 
it's not unique to any one leader. They just, they like to build a settler in their second city. I, I have no idea why, but like they almost all do this. It's really bizarre um, the way that they like to do this. So anyway, here comes Wang Khan. So he is going to found the first religion. No one's going to be able to beat him to this one. Uh, he researched, all right, so he, oh, it looks like he picked up, either he researched agriculture or popped it from a hut because he has managed to connect his rice and that's, that's going to help him for sure. Meanwhile, Mao's going for animal husbandry. He's already picked up hunting. So he's researching the text he needs to research. He's got the ivory um, improved, although he hasn't roded it yet because I guess he doesn't have wheel tech. Just going around and trying to check in on how the other leaders are doing with their capitals. Ragnar has not connected anything, so he's off to a bad start. Sergei Varman um, has connected his gold tile. That's nice. Well, improved it. He hasn't connected it. He's improved it. So that's going to help him with his early research. He has not farmed. He has agriculture. He's not farmed his corn tiles yet, though. And Saladin has finished researching fishing, so he's building work boats, has not improved any tiles yet. Churchill, he mined his pig's tile, which is probably the best he could do at the start of the game, honestly. So that was kind of smart. But some of these leaders are definitely off to faster starts than others. Well, this is, this is a really good tile to farm because it can be swapped between the two cities. Now the AI probably will not do that because the AI I don't think is smart enough, but um, could in theory do that. So Wang Khan does found the first religion as expected. So founded Confucianism, so that will, good spot for it, it's going to pop his borders, he'll be able to grab the um, the food bonus tile there. And I would expect Saladin to get the other religion, that would be the most logical outcome here. Uh, he is on archery though, so I don't know. Uh, if you're curious about barbarians, here's the early barb report. No cities just yet, but there certainly are a lot of barbs hanging out. Um, I don't be surprised that the AI struggles to keep its tile improvements up, thanks to all these barbarians. Like, pillaging can be a real issue with all these barbs. El Saladin was temporarily on meditation. Interesting. Yeah, just being shielded from barbarian activity is a pretty big deal. Some of these leaders are probably going to get hit pretty, pretty hard. This is one situation where the protective trait might actually be, might actually be good. Like, I'm trying to watch Mao right here, and he goes for that barracks. Um, yeah, so like Wang Khan, it looks like he's going to have his rice pillaged. Nope, actually not. The archer attacked. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I don't think Ragnar has any tile improvements yet, so... <laughs> this um, uh, gold tile could be tough to keep up as well, just because it's kind of on the outskirts. So does anyone actually have another settler out yet? Let's see. Uh, no, that's a worker for Story of Armin. Work boat. There. Worker. They all seem to build workers at like the same time. Okay, so no, I don't think anyone else is a settler out yet. Probably not necessarily safe. And by the way, thank you for subscribing again, Licky Kitty. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, Great Wall is actually relevant for this game. I think Licky Kitty subscribed a couple times before. Yeah, see, like Mal's having his tile improvements get torn up here by these barbarians. He just lost all his tile improvements. Um, his protective traits helping him out here. This is a game where going for archery I, like genuinely does help. Um, Mal's building a settler though, so maybe he'll get that out. You can kind of settle your way past the barbarians to a certain extent. You know, like we got a settler under production there too. Yeah, so the AIs are mostly struggling. Now maybe this helps Saladin in the sense that his workboats can't really get pillaged until barbarian naval units show up. Because like a lot of these AIs are having their stuff pillaged right now. Um, he's actually keeping, but yeah, the work boats can't really get pillaged, so that could be good. See, so like that gold resource got pillaged as well. There's the creative culture popping out, and that could be helpful just because uh, barbs can't spawn in the areas where the uh, your borders are. Uh, okay. <laughs> So Ragnar just lost his capital to barbarians. What the heck? <laughs> what? Oh man. Okay. Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, he might. He could legit die to barbarians here. Oh boy, Ragnar. What the heck? Remember, this is the guy who has the aggressive trait. 
Um, I wonder if that was just a bad combat roll or something, but man. Uh, yeah, no, it would count as first to die if he dies to the Barbarians, for sure. Oh boy, Ragnar. He may have just gotten unlucky on a combat roll, but, um, oof. Oh boy. That's not good. <laughs> uh, no, no one would get kill credit if Ragnar died to the Barbarians. Yeah, this could be rough for some of these guys. Show the oh no well I don't think I can see the combat yeah see I can't see the combat log, right? Because it's it's me I'm I'm not Ragnar yeah I don't think you can see it. <laughs> I have to add the barbarians as a sieve to record their kills. Yeah so yeah the AIs are definitely struggling with the barbs. We'll see who's able to clear their territory. This is a game where the protective trait legitimately could be quite helpful in clearing out the barbs. Uh, also, if anyone can get a, like a metal resource connected, that could be pretty big too. Like, does anyone have? Um, like a metal, so like Wang, this is also pretty big for Mao. He's got copper one tile away from his capital. That could end up being really big. Uh, well, like Wang Khan has iron at his capital. Now he'd have to get there first, but that could be big. And like Court, uh, Churchill has horses right next to his capital. That would help. Um, Ragnar does have iron here, but of course he lost his capital. So, whoops. <laughs> I don't feel sorry for Ragnar. If you can't defend your own capital from barbarians, they start with freaking four archers on this difficulty level. It shouldn't be that hard to hold your capital. Um, I don't think he's going to die to barbarians, but it's not guaranteed either. Yeah, dying to barbs would be the worst game an AI's ever had, for sure. <laughs> Ragnar adopts slavery, Ragnar gets enslaved. So we still haven't seen another city pop out on the map yet from any of these AIs. Um, they've been struggling to hold their own territory. So I did miss that. We did have a, another religion pop up. So as expected, Wang Khan and Saladin have split the religions. That's to no surprise thus far. Also, that holy city culture is probably legitimately helpful in defending over here. I'm trying to keep an eye on Ragnar because he does just have the one city at this point. Like, if he gets unlucky, he could legit die here. It's not impossible. He has two archers on defense, which should be enough. Because remember, the AI gets a huge bonus against Barbarians on this difficulty. Um, so it should be enough. The Northern Civs have more problems with Barbs. I think that's true. I do think that's true. Yeah, like, Surya of Armin is struggling to keep any of his tile improvements up right now. Great Wall could be really crucial for whoever ends up getting it. <laughs> this is one game where it, uh, it's like legit good to have the Great Wall. And like Churchill is struggling to keep some of his tile improvements up too. Unreachable territory, right? Yes, you are correct. Thank you for spotting that, Steve, on that. Let's just fix that right now. Because a Barb City could spawn on that tile, and then it would screw up the AI. Thank you for spotting that. So we just changed it to a Hill Tile. Screwing over Ragnar! More Barbarians for you, Ragnar! No. Yeah, he still has, he has only one, he's only got one archer in his capital right now because he keeps stupidly attacking out with archers instead of just defending. Um, yeah, if he screws this up, he can legit die here because there's a lot of barbs closing in on Ragnar. He needs to just fortify in his city. Yeah, there's a, I mean, okay, there's a, it's a lot of barbs here, you guys. <laughs> He's got two archers on defense. Oops, wrong, wrong key. That's the, the key I used to take screenshots in some other games. Um, well, let's see. All right. He could have died there, but I think that by holding that, I think, I think he's going to make it through because he's got another archer. This archer will pop out between turns. And with three archers, I think he'll have it. I don't know why he's promoting his... Oh, wait, never mind. He's already got three archers, and another one's going to pop out. I think with three archers, he'll be okay. But, um, yeah, now he's got four archers. I think that'll be enough, but this dude's not going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> this is pretty rough going for him. So Wang Khan is the first to get a third city out. Um, I guess Churchill also has one out. Does anyone else have a settler out right now? Like, does Surya Marmon have a settler? No, that's a worker. Ragnar certainly doesn't. Um, Mal's only one turn away from finishing a settler, although he's 
<laughs> he's got a, a, a city garrison three archer in his capital, so I don't think he's in any serious trouble. But he's also struggling to clear his territory of uh, barbarian units. Like, he really needs to get the copper connected. Sir, oh, Sir Roman has a third city as well. Thank you for spotting that. Oh, and thanks for subscribing, J.R. Regan. J.R. Regan has um, also donated generously to this channel in the past, just, just by the way. So certainly not needed, but appreciated. Yeah, so he's got a city. All right, this at least will get him copper. Like, this game literally is going to turn into who can just survive the barbarians, which is going to be, which is kind of fascinating to watch, honestly. Um, like, Ragnar is just holding on with his one city. Uh, like, any... Oh, okay, and Wang also completed um, Stonehenge. Okay, that's pretty nice. So, yeah, maybe Wang Khan, he seems to be handling the barbs a little bit better. Maybe just because he's more sheltered here. He's right on the coast. But, um, yeah, the Stonehenge build, the Holy City, the fact that he's out the three cities, definitely helping. Like, Mal is more middle of the pack right now because he can't seem to get his uh, territory cleared of barbs. Oh, boy, wow. <laughs> Did you guys see that? He moved the settler here, here, here. But, like, the animation was delayed. So we saw the barb archer move onto this tile. And then the settler, like, leisurely stroll past the barb archer. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Granted, that was just an artifact of how the animation worked, but it looked like he had just walked his settler right into the middle of the barbarians. Unbelievable. Uh, I don't know where this settler's going to go, by the way. <laughs> oh my god. Talk about, <laughs> talk about risky business here. What is he doing with this settler? <laughs> There's barb archers everywhere. <laughs> I don't know how this settler survives, to be honest. Did it run back into one of the cities? No, it got captured and deleted for sure. Oh boy, Mal, 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 Mal. What are you doing, buddy? <laughs> that settler is definitely dead. Uh, if only four or five AIs had survived, would I have rolled a smaller map? Probably. I probably would have gone to a small map if we'd only had five sieves. Oh boy, yeah, so Mal, not doing great. Our big favorite, struggling with these barbarians. Um, Surya Marmon's creative trait seems to be helping. Wang Khan being down here on the bottom of the map and getting a holy city also seems to have helped. Um, maybe Saladin will be able to make some progress too now that his holy cities pop the borders. Definitely an unexpected game. Some weird stuff going on in this one with the Raging Barb. This is why we don't turn on Raging Barbs for the other games, by the way. Now, can Saladin manage to get this set city down without losing it to the Barbarians? Um, so far, yes. Okay, not the greatest spot. I guess he wanted the horses. Pretty terrible city, but it will shield his capital a little bit from barbarian activity, and that could that could be important. Um, Ragnar is somehow down to just two archers again. He must have been attacking out of his city with these archers like an idiot. He does have another one um, about to finish, but like this dude just keeps managing to um, lose units. I don't see him getting another city anytime soon. He is really screwed right now. It's true. Saladin does not need horses for his unique unit, but of course he needs them for horse archers and the like. Uh, Churchill's doing okay. He's keeping some of his tile improvements up. He's got like a little area right in like this valley here that's somewhat protected. He's also got another settler out, so that's that, I mean that's good. Oh, someone also someone just donated by the way. I had an email message pop up. So thank you to whoever donated. If you uh, Feel free to identify yourself in the chat because um, it just popped up in my email inbox. Meanwhile, Mao, our big favorite, is still struggling down here. Like, he can't seem to get off these two cities right now. He's got copper, but he can't connect it. He has no resources connected whatsoever. Um, still completely barren territory here at 50 minutes. Or 50 minutes, 50 turns into the game. So I feel confident in this being a slower game. I'm not at all confident that Mal's going to win at this point, because Mal has dropped to next to last, um, ahead of only Ragnar. He's got these super promoted archers, but he has not been able to clear his territory. Um, maybe he'll finally be able to do that now, and losing a, losing a city, or not a city, losing a settler to the barbs did not help. So anyway, oh, and Surya Marmon up to a fourth city, yeah. Oh man, maybe I should have picked Surya Marmon. I was thinking about picking him, but... I wasn't too sure. He is, um, he's doing quite well here, Sir Yavarman. 
He has not managed to get that gold tile reconnected. Maybe I should have realized that creative trait would be pretty good against the barbarians. Anyway, so let's zoom out, get our look at the map. You, well, you can really see where the barbs are concentrated now, can't you, right? Like if you look at this map, there's a huge belt of them in the north, and then there's a group of them here and then down in the south. We don't have any barb cities just yet though, which is kind of interesting. I, I think that might be because Ragnar, oh, we have the captured city. I think that it might be because Ragnar doesn't have any extra cities that the barbs aren't spawning them. Surya Marmot will probably find a way to squander this somehow. Norway is more barb than, than Norway. <laughs> it's true. Nor Norway is mostly barbarian at this point in time. Uh, and Churchill got a fourth city out as well down here at Hastings. And should show it with the cultural borders too. Just so you guys can see. Yeah. Um, so some of the civs are definitely civilizing. And some of the others are still trapped in barbarian land. Namely Ragnar and also Mal to a certain extent. Are still struggling. Uh, Fargrass, GMP, Saladin, and Ryan Khan are the most, mostly because of religion though. Production, food. They're all relatively close on food right now. Power, Ragnar is struggling. Everybody else is pretty close. Uh, culture. So not, not too much of distinction just yet. I don't, I don't think anyone has managed to connect a, like, we still don't have any strategic resources connected for Wang Khan or Mao, whose territory has been pillaged. Surya Marmon is, all right, Surya Marmon's got copper connected. This is going to help him a lot. He actually has a, a resource that allows him to build better units. Like, once he gets some axes out, that'll help a ton against the, the barbarians. Um, and Saladin's also managed to get some resources connected. Churchill just starting to do that. I actually think Surya Marmon's in the best position right now. Surya Marmon, because he doesn't have the... What is this? Oh, text key leader sitting out full. Couldn't fit. Interesting. Capital... Yeah. <laughs> Captured City's going to start producing units with a barracks. True. Ragnar has enough archers, though, that it's unlikely that he's going to die. <laughs> he will get the 40% defensive bonus eventually, which he didn't manage to get in his capital. Um, his problem is he keeps attacking out. All right, so Mal has managed to clear his territory of enemy units, right? So he did manage to get the barbs clear for the moment. Um, so he can finally start developing now. The good news for Mal is that he doesn't need to get much territory to the north of his sieve because he's got this back line to fill in. But um, needless to say, this game is not going the way he wants. Maybe his workers will go ahead and connect the um, connect the copper sometime soon. Losing that settler hurt him a lot. Like, if he had just gotten another city down along... Like, let's say he had planted a city, like, right here earlier in the game. He'd be in such better shape right now. Anyway, so, then, yeah, that's more or less where we stand. Um, what are they actually researching? Because we could be getting close to the third religion popping up at some, from somebody. Boy, Sir Yorman managed to capture an awful lot of territory. He, like, he's already in position to claim, like, with, with Ragnar basically dead at this point, and Mal stunted, the whole east of the map is just wide open for Surya Varman right now. Can we check if Mal has bronze working? Good question. I thought that he did. He does have bronze working, yes. He does have bronze working. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Gwilar. Appreciate it very much. Ragnar is still one city challenge. He does not have a settler. He has enough archers right now that he, I think he's, like, temporarily pushed back the barbs. But, I mean, like, look at this map. The whole eastern side of the map is so weak. Surya Marmon's got a lot of potential here. And honestly, so does Wang Khan, too. He just hasn't expanded quite as much, but now he's getting settlers out. Boy, I kind of wish I had picked Surya Marmon, which I really thought about doing. But I was convinced by the... Um, I was convinced that Mao would... I mean, Mao can still get back in it. It's still early in the game. Uh, this city is really nice for him. Love this spot. Double food resource, more floodplains to work, can work some of these floodplains shared with the capital. This is where he needed to go. It's the exact tile I pinged like 10 minutes ago. Surya Marmon's building Great Wall. Oh, that would be really nice for him if he could land that. On this barb heavy map, that would be really nice. <laughs> pick Surya Marmon first to die. Okay. Yeah, the Wang Khan first to die pick is not looking great right now, but I will say. He is probably, the, look, I mean, okay, look at this. So if you're, at, like, Wang Khan's flying high right now, but look at this. Worst enemy of Mal, worst enemy of Ragnar, worst enemy of Saladin, worst enemy of Surya Varman. So 
His position's good for right now, but diplomatically, he is not well liked, and he hates he hates everybody else, and everybody else hates him. So do keep that in mind. It, um, it is still very much in play that he could be first to die if he gets ganged up on by the other leaders because they all dislike him. So all of Sir Harmon's barbs funneled to Ragnar. I think you're right. I think a lot of them did. Ragnar is still still unable to get off his one city. Um, he's got three archers in there, which is probably enough, as long as he's not a moron and keeps attacking out into the forest. He's also trying to recapture his capital. That's not going to happen with archers against archers, though. Archers are defensive units in Sifor, not offensive units. Yeah, so Mal has connected his copper, so now he's got... He's got an axe in production, and once he gets the axes in production, he should be okay. He does need to get some more health and resources, and I, one person did mention this, that he lacks health resources. Um, he's also got the stone, which is kind of interesting. Um, but like with the, the rice tile is going to help, that's another health point. If he can take this barb city, which he will be the favorite to capture later on, that's two more health. So I think he'll be okay long term. That said, Wang Khan did found another city over here. So we've got the border shaping up between China and Korea. Um, and it's pretty much right to, next to Beijing. So that's definitely good for Wang Khan that he's getting these territories. Does Wang Khan have uh, 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 copper? Yes. Yeah, so does he have metal? He has iron. Wang Khan has iron at his capital. So once he researches iron working, he'll, uh, he'll have metal resources. Good question. Um, Churchill hasn't expanded. Um, we do see more cities coming out from Saladin, though. Baghdad and Najran. So he basically double expanded out to five cities. Looks like Saladin has the barbs under control right now. And he's getting a decent amount of territory. Uh, he's also sending an unescorted settler up here. Did he just lose that settler? I think he just lost that settler. Uh, nope, never mind. He moved it back here. Moved it back down to this tile. And he's connected the horse. So this is why the horses matter for him. So he can build chariots in the early game. He does not seem to have any yet. He does not have any metals. I guess he has iron over here. Um, so that's why the chariot, the horses are so valuable because it lets him build chariots. Uh, also note that Mao is about to found his own religion here. He is also on Great Wall, but I think he's going to be beaten out on this. Maybe the fail gold will help though. Because um, he's got the stone, but I think he's going to be beaten out by Surya Varman. Orders just expanded here, and that's nice to push back the barb spawn territory. Now it looks like he's also going to get a coastal city. Now normally this would be a pretty crummy city, but he can use work some of the floodplains. And at this point for now, it's pretty much just get more cities, period. Yeah, so like by splitting off some of the floodplains from the capital, he can work that in the stone and it's not that bad of a city. He's actually really putting a lot into this great wall. Only five turns. Too bad for him that Surya Varman is going to get it. So yeah, Mao's getting back in it. Um, I think he's he came out of that early game in a fairly weak position, but again, having that peninsula back here should help him. Uh, remember, no one can pass through his territory until unless he gives them open borders, and I don't know that he's going to sign that. Oh, Ragnar got a second city! Yay! Go Ragnar! He's he's on the comeback trail here. Good job, Ragnar. Mao versus Wang upcoming. Yeah, quite possibly. Anyway, let's see if Suri Varman gets this, the Great Wall here, which I suspect he will. So Suri's got a fifth city as well. And this one claim, not, I mean, for a Tundra city, this is pretty solid. Am I sure no one can get behind? I mean, they can. It's not impossible. He could sign open borders. There's a little narrow avenue where they could walk past here. But um, he's probably reasonable. It's most likely that he will get that. Also, the question is who's going to capture Nidoros, right? The former capital. Oh yeah, and Wang Khan, yeah, Wang Khan expanded out to more cities too. Thanks for pointing that out. This one is pushes him out towards the center of the map. And then he's also going over here towards Churchill. So he's out to six cities. Not bad. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, has room for another city or two. Although he will not be able to get over here unless he can get open borders with one of these two, because their territory currently blocks him. No one has opened, so right now, writing has not really been discovered. Saladin's the first one going after it. So it's gonna be a big turn. We're gonna first have the Great Wall founded, built by Surya Varman, and we're also gonna have a religion pop up for Mao. Surprising that Mao would go for um, <laughs> a religion. He's one of the least, 
has like less interest in religion than pretty much any other AI. It's what he's kind of known for, but he's going to have his own religion. So we've got three religions now in this game. Interesting to see how that's going to shape things over time. And as badly as the early game's gone for Mal, I mean, there's still territory to expand into because Ragnar is so weak, right? Like, he can still get another city up north here and then backfill. So, like I said, his position's not awful long term. Uh, Churchill doing about what you'd expect. He's out to five cities. It looks like he has mostly pushed back the barbs in his territory. So everyone's mostly cleared the barbs from their lands at this point. Ragnar's on ironworking, and he will have a resource once he connects that. He's actually building another settler. So it looks like they've all mostly managed to fill out their territory. Saladin did get this northern city that his settler was going for earlier. Pushing back the barbs. Churchill gets bronze working. Yep. So if we go back to barb vision here, the barbs are still up there in the north. But they've, and down here in the southeast, but otherwise they've mostly been cleared out at this point. Just to give you a sense of where everybody is. Uh, a couple wonder builds in progress too. Temple of Artemis, pyramids, blah blah blah. Not sure that it's a good build to go for pyramids without stone connected. Or does, no, he doesn't have stone connected, but I guess he will, so maybe he'll get that. Let's see if we can spot any um, settlers out on the map right now. Now that's a worker. Here, oh, here's one. I mean, there's there's a settler just roaming around. Probably gonna found on that tile. Churchill does have a barb behind a hill. Oh yeah. Thanks for that. Another part of the map that spawned with. Uh... There we go. So yeah, Churchill. One, two, three, four. There's gonna be a sixth city over here. I don't know why he picked that particular tile. There's no resources here at all, but hey, cities are cities. More cities are always good to have. Got a bit of a pyramids race going on here. A couple of different people. I will say that Surya Varman often does not um, expand enough. However, his resources are helping him a lot. He's got triple happiness resources already. That's going to let him grow his cities larger. So that's pretty nice for him. Ragnar's trying to get his capital back. It's not happening right now, though. And then this spot here to cut off uh, Ragnar's avenues to expand south. Not bad. Oh, Beijing's down to just 12 turns for the pyramid. He has a lot of production in this city. Mal does. I guess he's most likely to win the pyramids race that a lot of people are going for. So Surya Marvin finishes the Oracle. Went for metal casting. You can tell because he's got forges under production. Um, Surya Barman is kind of running away with this just a little bit right now. He's in the strongest position out of these leaders, I think. Particularly if he goes after Wang Khan, who is the other strong leader. Like, if Suri were to have success against Wang Khan, then that would pretty much cement him as the dominant leader in this game. He also finished the Temple of Artemis, too. Okay. Not the greatest wonder, but um, it will give him some great person points, I suppose. Fairly weak wonder, but better to have it than not to have it, I guess. And he's continuing to settle up into the tundra. This will get him silver, but not until it hits 100 culture, so not anytime soon. But eventually, he'll have silver from this. Fairly weak city, but as we said, better than nothing. Um, and look at this. So here we have a city that uh, Wang Khan has claimed on the border with Mao. So Wang Khan has gotten pretty much the entire border region between these two, right? Like, so here's their two capitals. Everything in between them has gone over to Wang Khan. So yeah, it's not gone well for Mao. Not great. I should have stuck with my initial instinct and picked Surya Varman, who I was leaning towards earlier. Oh, well. There is a settler here in Shanghai. Mao's got to play for the long game here. Um, but he's just, his early game was weak enough that he's fallen a long way behind. Like, a long way behind. <laughs> so the map is mostly settled at this point. Um, Churchill got, did he just pick up another, oh, what's this? There's a big stack here for Wang Khan. It's not an attack stack. It looks like it's a defensive stack, which is weird to see all those units, like, right on the border. 
So Churchill picks up the religion of Saladin. That's not great for um, Lion Khan, because no one's picked up his religion yet. It's going to make Churchill not like him quite as much. Uh, yes, yeah, so he's only cautious instead of pleased. Mal needs a war between Suri Raman and Wang Khan. Uh, yes, he probably does, if you have Mal to win, like a lot of us do. That's probably what he needs. Suri Raman is just going to, like, absorb all the territory of Ragnar. <laughs> At least Ragnar did manage to get some tile improvements up. Mal does take the pyramids. We'll see if he swaps into anything interesting as a result of that. Representation would be the best choice. He's in the process of getting another city over here on the coast. Definitely has room for a couple more cities, but he's just, uh, like I said, put himself really far behind. Like, I think Mao is in a good position vis-a-vis -vis Saladin and Churchill. I'm just not sure I see him catching up to Surya Varman. He is sieging up this city with the City Raider Axe. Well, that didn't go well. He killed one of the, killed one of the three barbarian units. Or one of the four, excuse me. Three still surviving. Oh man, why would you plant there? One tile off the coast. Weird spot for a city. Is it so he can cram a fishing city there later on? I don't know. AI is weird sometimes. Um, but anyway, yeah. Uh, elsewhere, though, we've got... Anyone, does anyone look like they're plotting war right now? I'm trying to see what the builds are. I don't see it right now. It does not look like anyone is immediately plotting war. Ragnar got out to a third city as well. Yep. He's clinging to life along the coast. Uh, Wang Khan just picked up a prophet. That'll be used for his shrine. On a turn or two. There it goes. Hitting up there. Don't often get to see the great prophet, so there you go. They basically look like the great leaders from uh, Civ 3. Use like the same graphics. Oh, apparently we've got a war going on here. But it's not against Wang Khan. It's against Saladin. That's unexpected. Ah, uh, okay. Didn't see that coming. Oops, wrong text. Huh. Interesting. Okay. I'm surprised that he went after Saladin. This game does do unexpected things sometimes. Well, let's see their respective positions. Um, not good for Saladin. <laughs> not good for Saladin, yeah. So this city is going to get captured. Even with the wall bonus and the protective bonus, that's not enough to hold. Not against that stack, jeez. Uh, I don't know why he chose to go after Saladin instead of Wang. But, um, got at least one city. And Surya Varman, oh, okay, so he converted, he converted to Saladin's religion, oddly. I wonder if that will induce them to make peace or something. Really weird, though. Does Sir Roman have catapults coming in soon? I don't think so. He doesn't appear to be close to them. He's researching monarchy tech. No, he needs math and construction, so he's not, not, clo not close just yet. There's the religious block, potentially. Could certainly be bad news for Mao, <laughs> since he has another religion that's not part of this block. Continuing to go after this city here. Uh, Alright, so picked up that one. As I said, Mal's slowly getting his house in order here. Um, but he's put himself in a weak position, to be sure. Yeah, I'm a little surprised Suri Varman didn't go after um, Wang Khan. But he didn't. He went after Saladin instead. And this city is certainly surrounded by Saladin's culture. I'm not sure that this is going to be held long term. Mal did go to uh, representation, which is a good choice for him. The Barb City, like, surrounded by enemies. Anyway. So here's the big stack. Oh, I, I guess it's not a big stack anymore. Oh, that was just auto-raised. Okay. So Saladin's army was off in the north while that was going on. Uh, yeah, this is not going to work because Medina's on a hill, and it's got archers in it, and it's got the wall bonus. So this this is just not going to happen. All those units are going to die. If they attack, of course. Obviously, they need to attack for that to happen.
I do wonder what Wang Khan is going to do. Let's check the diplomacy real quick. See, like, Wang Khan hates everybody. He hates them all more or less evenly, too. I guess he doesn't even like Churchill. Look at that. He hates everyone. <laughs> That's our troll king. He hates everyone. Uh, they all have different religions from him. Interesting that Churchill really dislikes Mal. Um, yeah, so this guy's still the worst enemy. Of... It was weird that Sergei Marmon didn't attack his worst enemy. It was kind of bizarre. So, so, um, Wang Khan is still, uh, I was going to say, still Saladin's worst enemy, but no, it's not true. Sergei Marmon's his worst enemy. Otherwise, uh, Wang Khan would have been worst enemies of like every single person in this game. I'm also not sure that this city is going to be held for much longer. Yeah, so that attack obviously didn't... Oh, never mind. I was going to say that attack didn't work, but... Um, it, yeah, it didn't end up really doing anything, did it? Oh, well. Yes, we're... Oh, so he took another city way down here. Okay. Huh. So he's like, sniped off the southern... Arabian colonies. Interesting. Yeah, maybe it was because of the border city. Perhaps they had border tensions, but like there's border tensions with Korea as well. Don't look now. Uh, Ragnar's up to four cities. <laughs> He's hanging in there trying to get his capital back. How many cities does Mal have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> he needs a couple more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, especially with eight in the hands of Korea and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the hands of Churchill. Anyway. All right, that's turn 100. Looks like Wang is building up. Yeah, it does. He's got a number of swords in production. It does look like he could be going after somebody. Would the game would get interesting if he went after Surya Varman. Like, that would make the game interesting. If he goes after, like, Mao, he's just going to roll over Mao, and that's going to be that. All right, so bar graphs, let's look at that first. And then let's look at everybody's uh, research rate. So Wang Khan and Surya Varman are tops in GNP. Uh, note that Mao's went up by a lot because he went into representation, gets the uh, extra beakers for all those specialists the AI likes to run. Surya Varman's first by a wide margin there. Food, Surya Varman first, Wang Khan second. You know, Mao's not terrible in some of these bar categories. Um, power, Surya Varman, Wang Khan, everybody else is pretty together. Obviously, Ragnar is like last in everything. Let's see their beaker rates. All right, Churchill 34, Mal 47, Ragnar 30, Saladin 34, Surya Varman 48, Wang Khan, oh, 24, yikes. That's pretty low. Lower than Ragnar, actually, at least for the moment. I think Mal actually had the highest at 47. Certainly, nobody's tearing it up from a beaker standpoint. Um, getting some of these floodplains cottages is nice. Should probably be working this one over the... So here's classic micro. You drop the hilt, plain hill tile, work this tile. Should be working the, um, the sheep and all the plain, all the uh, floodplains cottages. Oh, well. So yeah, Mal's um, science is definitely ticking up. Definitely starting to tick up from all the floodplains. It's true, Wang Khan's on 30% research. That's true. But still not great. We do need to keep an eye on Wang Khan and see if he goes for any, um, if he's targeting anyone with a war declaration. So, Sir Roman on that, he's probably heading for construction now. Nope, going for calendar. Okay. So, no, no, um, it's unlikely that any of the core cities in Arabia are going to fall until catapults are on the scene. Just unlikely that because the defenses are just too strong. Like, that attack force is not going to break through that defense. It's just not going to happen. Interesting that Mal is going for Calendar, too. Does he have Calendar resources? He must, or else he wouldn't prioritize it. Uh, the bananas, that'll get him more health. The silks, in, incense. Okay, he's got three, three different... That makes sense, then. He's got three different Calendar resources. Still needs to get more territory for himself. Just end up getting pinched on uh, land a little bit as a result of his disastrous early game. Anyway. So, um, Sir Armin attacked and it went as badly as you would think. Churchill getting the Hanging Gardens. 
Ragnar went to Mal's religion. Okay. Ragnar's on construction. <laughs> also settling this spot. He's saying, no, I want the silver resource. Uh, there's a decent chance that could flip if this city gets more culture in it. And Nidoros has still not been recaptured. Crazy. If Mal had a disastrous early game, Ra I mean, Ragnar's was like beyond disastrous. <laughs> like, horrifying, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty bad. I do wonder if um, this city will be able to hold, just because it's like completely surrounded by Arabian territory. And like, here comes a Saladin stack to try to take it back. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to see if sir, anyone is built. Let me look at the power bar graph. That's another way to see if someone's... looks like. I mean, it looks like Wang Khan is building up to attack someone, right? The problem with him is he hates everybody, so it's really hard to predict who he would attack here. Where is um, Wang Khan? This, is this his stack? I was trying to see where he had his forces. Like, I'm trying to see if he's gathering them anywhere. He's got another settler there. Okay, I'm trying to keep an eye on Wang Khan. But, um... Yeah, so that city was recaptured. Just because it was really hard to hold that spot. Saladin also completed the Great Lighthouse. Good turn for Saladin. And Surya Varman has now gone to Mao's religion. Well, well, well. Okay, that's pretty significant that he's picked... Are they on the same river? They probably are, right? Yep, that's pretty big that he has now swapped over to Mao's religion. Yep, look at this, spread right up the river. Of course, possibly also spread by missionaries as well. So yeah, the, we're, getting, we're seeing a Jew... Now we have a Jewish block forming here against this Islamic, and then Wang Khan's still not practicing. Nobody else has Wang Khan's religion. Pretty consequential turn there. Certainly shaping up better for Mal than it was earlier. Like a Mal plus Surya Varman partnership is looking more likely at this point. Um, Surya Varman just needs to get out of this war with Arabia until he can get catapults going. Like he might retake Baghdad here because that city, yeah, was able to retake Baghdad because that city was not very well defended. But overall, he has not gained a whole lot from this war. Mostly, this war has hurt um, Saladin quite badly. I would love to see them sign peace and then Mal plus Surya Varman go after um, Wang Khan. That's what I would love to see. Don't know if that's going to happen, though. Oh, yeah. Request for a new music? Sure. We've been with the ancient music long enough. Now I need a tech-life monarchy. There we go. <laughs> Listen to this man. Which was the Islamic holy city? Um, here, Medina. The second city founded by um, uh, Saladin. Uh, well, it looks like we have a new war between China and uh, Korea. All right. Here we go. Wang Khan declares on Mao. Okay. Also, Wang planted a city way down here. That's uh, not a struggle that I think Mao can win. So Wang Khan is going to need... This is what Wang honestly needs to do. He kind of needs to overrun. And this is the timing is really good because Mao's army is up here trying to capture Nidoros. Uh, this is the time for him to try to make his play while, um, while Mao is still relatively weak and before the diplomatic environment swings against him. I mean, this is not without danger for Wang Khan, though, because remember, a lot of people hate Wang Khan. He is the worst enemy of Ragnar as well. If Surya Varman just hadn't attacked Saladin, this game would be going the way I expected it to. Yeah, where is Wang Khan's force? I can't seem to find his, his army. I'm looking for a large stack, and I'm not seeing a huge one anywhere. Oh, I think it's over here, maybe? Looks like he didn't have his forces grouped together. Normally, the AI doesn't attack unless their forces are already ready to go. 
Um, yeah, I mean, so clearly much stronger here. I just showed the paragraphs. Yeah, could someone no? Someone couldn't have bribed him to be at war, not um, because no one else was at war with Mal. So no, good question though. And yeah, see Mal's army is turning around and heading back south again. Don't be shocked if Ragnar gets pulled into this war because he also does not like Wang Khan. Um, Wang Khan is researching construction, so that's the tech he needs to pick. Oh, here we go. Here's his force right here. Pretty good army. Not bad. And position to go after Beijing is a small pillar. Yeah, that's a small pillar force. Yeah, I don't know. Mal's like on the rise, but Mal needs to, he needs someone else to join this war, honestly. He needs Surya Varman not to be off fighting in, uh, in Arabia. He needs uh, Surya Varman to be over here helping him. Yes, Wang Khan is researching construction. That is the one thing that has thrown this game off, is the decision to go attack. Oh, that's so like there's... It's going to be hard to punch through those defenses, but that is an awful lot of units from Surya Varman. If he would just have researched construction, he probably could make this happen. But instead he attacked and just lost a bunch of units. So that's... Presumably the Code of Laws religion that was just founded by Arabia. Could also be um, theology religion as well. It was the all right, he used a great prophet to slingshot theology. I believe theocracy is his favorite civic, so. Alright, so there is one piece of good news for Mao here. Um, although Wang Khan is researching construction, he does not have construction yet, so this initial attack is going to be launched without catapults. And Mao is um, he does have all the protective units, so I think this defense will hold here. Let's see. Yeah, so um, he was able to hold against that initial attack, and Wang Khan just lost a ton of units. Yeah, so he just lost a lot there. Um, however, the problem is Wang Khan is researching construction, and once those are available, um, he'll be able to remove the city's defenses. And there's just not as much of a production base here on the part of Wang, uh, on the part of Mao, because he, he only has six cities. One, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, six cities against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, 50% more cities on the part of Wang Khan. It's just generally hard to defeat someone who's got that kind of an edge. Um, we could also see war elephants coming in on both sides if they are able to get to horseback riding. Surya Raman does not have construction yet. Okay, so this will unlock War Elephants for Mao and for Wang Khan. Wang Khan will need to research horseback riding, but Mao already has it, so Mao will be able to build uh, elephants immediately. Yep, so here comes more units trickling in. This stack is not quite healed yet. Mal probably shouldn't be building a market. <laughs> also, the mausoleum finishing now is kind of weird. Uh, so Surya Raman's on construction now. But doesn't have it yet. Look at it. Wow, it's a lot of city raider units. A lot of defenders. Oh, I mean, it's really hard to attack with swords against all those axes, though. If he had construction, or if he had catapults, obviously it would be very different. But he doesn't. I think Saladin's doomed as soon as the catapults come out. Um, once again, Mal held. Another big attack was launched, and it did not succeed. But it's certainly not good for Mal that he's fighting at his capital. Like, you can see Wang Khan's lost a lot of units here. Oh, the Coat of Walls. <laughs> It'd be funny if Churchill finishes Coat of Walls and then founds the religion. And then we have yet another religion being practiced in this game. <laughs> this is where being protective does actually do something. Those extra promotions on the archers. And yeah, so there's still a horse here, but does not seem close to capturing Nidoros yet. That's like the one barb prize still out there. So Yorman did attack and it didn't succeed, but he's finishing construction, just as Wang Khan is finishing construction. So we've got the Huachas in, coming in play. Um, here's the 
Here we go. If you're, that's the unique unit of Korea. So their special ability is, what is it? Uh, the plus 50% against melee units. Yeah, kind of nice. Kind of nice units. Of course, we might see the Choco News for China, which are also really good units with the collateral damage. Of course, they have to get to machinery for that, which is still a ways away. Let's see who gets the Code of Walls Religion, by the way. I think Churchill goes first in turn order between the two of them, but I'm not sure. Yep. So we got another religion on hand, although we haven't seen um, Churchill swap to it yet. So catapults popping up on both sides now in this war. And Suri Warman's finishing construction too. <laughs> Building the Apostolic Palace. <laughs> Saladin sure likes his religious stuff, doesn't he? All right, so we should see some more movement soon in terms of um, cities actually falling. So as far as our uncommitted leaders, we've got Churchill. He doesn't like Mao. He doesn't like Ragnar. He doesn't like Surya Varman. All people he doesn't like. And as far as Ragnar, he really dislikes Churchill and Wang Khan. So Ragnar is not that strong. Churchill might be strong enough to do something. Ragnar does have catapults, though. So OK, there is that little detail. Um, Ragnar is weak enough that I don't think he really matters that much right now. Another the usual request spam. I will say that Mal has defended pretty well thus far. Protective trait coming in handy. He's building a lot of horse archers for some reason. but he's going to have to survive against the Huaches next, and that should be more difficult. Uh, meanwhile, over here, has Surya Mormon managed to put together a stack that has catapults in it yet? No, no, he has not. So until he actually puts catapults in his stack, he's not going anywhere. How about Churchill? Is he plotting war? I mean, he's building some units, so it's not impossible. Does he even have open borders with some of these guys? He has open borders with Wang Khan and Saladin, so he can get through his immediate neighbors if he needed to. Like, I wouldn't be shocked if he went after one of these guys. I'd say this game is still pretty wide open, um, at least up until Surya Varman is able to start rolling through Saladin, which it looks like he might be doing shortly. Like once he gets the catapults in play, he can he can take out Medina, and if Medina falls, that's it for, for um. Uh, for what's his name, for Saladin. Um, looks like Wang Khan is losing another stack over here in China. Yep, just lost another force. So, um, yeah, so far, we've definitely seen Mao outfight um, Wang Khan. And of course, granted, it's in his territory, so it's easier, but he's got the, he's got the elephants on, on uh, running around now, and that definitely helps. There's the watches. Just out of curiosity, if you're want to see them. Little rocket carts. Like we've, yeah, Churchill does look like he's building up right now. Um, I guess with that said though, Mao has, he lost a ton of units here when he did something. I don't know what he did. So Wang Khan does retain a big edge in power. I'm not sure what Mao did to lose all those units because it looked like they were converging in power, but then he must have thrown his units away doing something dumb. Maybe he attacked a city and just lost a bunch of units. So Churchill's the one to watch right now, because we've got these two wars that are relatively even. I'd say that like Korea is slightly ahead in its war against China, whereas Khmer is very far ahead in its war against Arabia. It just hasn't managed to translate that into territory captures yet. But things could flip on a flip pretty decisively if Churchill gets into one of these wars. Like if he attacks Sri of Arman, suddenly things look a lot different. Oh yay! Sal Ch Ragnar got his capital back. Congratulations, Ragnar. Let's give this man a round of applause. He did get his former capital back. He was down to one archer in his second city at one point in time, but he did manage to recapture it. He's even got the silver connected up here. He's got a little bit of a, little bit of a, he's, you know, he's like a minor civ now. He's not uh, just a city state as he was before. 
How long did the barbs have it? Um, a, a little, about 80 turns, rough, no, a little less than that, like 75 turns, something like that. Gold star for Ragnar, yeah. There is one more barb city, but it's tundra size one, so pretty much irrelevant overall. Well done, Ragnar. You've made it back in. Uh, now that he's captured that, though, he might be interested in joining a war. Uh, there's one barb archer here that's going to get killed by something, or I thought it was going to get killed by something. Didn't end up happening, though. Churchill's waiting for his big opportunity to land thousands of troops on a peninsula <laughs> and watch the disaster unfold. Well played. Well played. <laughs> yeah. I think he's going to get involved at some point in one of these wars. Man, it would be awesome if he attacked Wang Khan, but he's not going to. He likes Wang Khan, I think. Well, he's only cautious. Never mind. Loves Saladin, but he's only cautious with Wang Khan. So he could attack Wang Khan, too. It's unlikely he'd be much more likely to attack one of the ones he's annoyed with, but it's not impossible, as we saw with Saladin going after, or uh, Surya Varman going after Saladin earlier. That's a nice wonder for him to grab, too. Statue of Zeus. That'll make it super annoying for anyone to attack him. Yes, he was behind Gallipoli. That was a reference, yes. Probably should have clarified that. Uh, so anyway, so here comes Wang Khan. He's got a new stack with the Flachas. This could be a lot of trouble for, for Mal, because that's going to remove the defenses of Beijing. Uh, whereas it looks like Mal is focusing this city with his catapults instead of the much more serious... Oh boy, yeah, that's... This looks really bad for Mal, these two stacks incoming. That's not looking good. Also, where are the catapults on the part of Surya Varman? He has been unable to advance. I mean, Mal will have longbows, but I don't know. I mean, I guess protective longbows are pretty good, but... He is getting the longbows just in time, that's true. This is a pretty good stack, though. Alright, so Surya Varman and Saladin made peace. With just Baghdad changing hands. Alright, so... Still, first the die for Wang Khan is still in play, because Surya Arman doesn't like him that much. Um, he's, yeah, not terribly pleased. Worst enemy of Mal and Ragnar. Worst enemy of Saladin. Worst enemy of Wang Khan. Worst enemy of Churchill. Interesting. So it's still in play for Surya Arman to go after Wang Khan. Got a siege of um, young son down here. There's a city south of it. No, right, he got these two cities, but no core territory of Saladin taken out there. Ultimately, didn't. So, like, Saladin was greatly weakened, but was not removed from the game. We've got our leader, our clear, our clear number one, our clear number two, a very close race for third, and then some also runs. Saladin weakened from that war. Ragnar desperately trying to get back in this game. Again, I wouldn't be shocked if he jumps into the, one of these wars, because he's Ragnar. That's what he does. Alright, yep, so that little force continues to advance. I think Wang Khan is trying to attack. So we're going to have, like, dueling sieges over here right now, between these two. Yeah, Mal just lost, like, most of the defenses in this city. Um, I don't... I don't know if... Uh, I don't think protective longbows are going to be enough here. I think he's going to lose his capital. Yeah, this guy's the... Now he's the worst enemy of Surya Varman again. So come on, Surya Varman, come to the rescue here. Come to Mal's rescue. So that is noteworthy, though, the worst enemy of all of them. All right, so Beijing held that turn, but uh, it's not going to hold any longer because it's down to just a horse archer, an axe, and a war elephant. Like, Mal's going to pick up the great generals, but as I, as I thought, just too many units pushing through here. A lot of losses on both sides, but just too many units here on the part of uh, Wang Khan. 
he's going to push through and get this. Also, Churchill, who looked like he was plotting war earlier, has apparently backed off and is not plotting war anymore. Um, Suri Varman also clearly not plotting war right now. He's building courthouses and markets and monuments. All right, so Mao takes one city, but then he loses his capital. Not a good trade. Not a good trade. So yeah, they uh, swap cities there, and I think the yeah, I was gonna say I think the pyramids are in that city. So does does that now kick Mao out of uh, representation? No, apparently he's able to stay in representation even though he lost the pyramids. Good pickup for I mean Wang Khan. Like if if this war continues in, as a one v one, he's gonna overrun Mao. Um, if Surya Varman and Ragnar join the war, which they do not appear to be interested in doing right now then Wang Khan could still be first to die. I know that seems weird because he's in a great spot, but he could still be first to die if the diplomacy swings against him. So a lot can still happen in this one. A lot just depends on what the AI leaders choose to do. Okay, so that Barb City auto-raised. I was like, what city is captured? That doesn't make sense. Um, this is the one thing about Suri Varman, though. He sometimes is much more willing to just be peaceful than he is to go for the, uh, like, go for the kill against someone else. Where we stand right now in terms of power. Yeah, so they both took heavy losses here. It's just that, um, Wang Khan's better able to afford losses. Churchill playing the Luigi stash strategy. All right, so it looks like Wang's just moving right on to the next strongest city in China, Shanghai. I mean, this is like the core of China. If both of these cities are gone, then the Civ is essentially dead. Is anyone else going to join this war? So far, no. So Yuvarman's just like apparently content to just keep building wonders. And Ragnar is, I guess, trying to develop his sieve, where he apparently still can't cut down all these trees. If Wang gets pieces out and the army gets trapped in Chinese borders, true. I, I don't think he's going to have any trouble. I mean, he's going to capture Shanghai pretty easily here. There's only two longbows in this city. Even attacking across the river, he's got a whole bunch of watches to apply collateral damage. The city is... Uh, like I said, pretty toast unless someone else is able to come save it, basically. Like, I keep checking over here to see if um, Suri Warman's building anything, but nope, he's just running wealth in his cities. Churchill as well, he's also decided to be peaceful here. Boy, we were all uh, pretty bullish on Mao in this game, weren't we? It's definitely not happening so far. Now, is this city on a hill? Okay, so here's the one thing. And Churchill just went to... Oh, there it is. And there it is. Okay. <laughs> wow, and just like that, the game potentially swings. Okay. Surrey Marmon declares war. However, his war declaration... Um, yeah. Here it is. All right, so... 44 units in that stack. Well... Okay, so what I was going to say before that came in, yeah, Mal is potentially saved here. What I was going to say was that um, this city is on a hill and the attack will come across a river. I don't know if that's enough to hold the city. I, I Honestly, I think not because there's so many attackers here, but that is going to help. Let's see. I still think the city gets captured, though. Oh, no. Wow, I was wrong. On a hill across a river. Too strong, apparently. And we have an apostolic palace for Islam. Alright, so now we got to check out where Islam is present. Oh boy. Not in a lot of civs. <laughs> Not in a lot of cities. Islam is only present in... It's not even present in every Arabian city. There's one city of... Surya Varman that has it, and two of Churchill, but that's it. None of the other leaders have it at all. So we could see some pretty epic trolling here, definitely. Um, 
So yeah, things may be set up for Surya Varman plus Mal plus maybe Ragnar to work together because they do all have the shared religion. Not good for Saladin or Wang Khan or um, Churchill. At least Churchill's free religion right now, thanks to Shwedagon Paya. Um, yeah, Wang Khan could still be first to die. I know that has seemed crazy. Oh yeah, and don't forget to add the Observer. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Do that right now. Because Sri Varman's in the 1v2. How much of Priya's army just died? That's a great question. Let's advance one turn and find out. Just to let the bar graph catch up. Oh, a lot. Ugh. He lost a lot. This is the attack on Beijing. This is the attack on Shanghai. He lost a lot in those two attacks. Oh, wow. And Ma Mal just picked... Oh, which geez. So if Mal can get his capital back, like, he has captured two cities here. Um, losing his capital obviously sucks. But if he can get this back and start taking territory from Wang Khan, we really could have the Mal plus Suri show in this game. Um, might not be enough for Mal to win the game, because he's pretty far behind, but we could see Suri Varman 2 and Mal 1. Or, opposite order. Suri Varman 1, Mal 2. Because, like, this city over here, Nampo, is... Pretty toast. All right, so no surprise, Saladin is the only one who has like any. Wait, how does wait Mao apparently does have the religion in one of his cities? Where we must have missed this, but there has to be Islam somewhere in a Mao city. Oh, <laughs> this city right here. So he can't have a crusade call against him at least. Wang is so tro trolly; he just trolled himself. Maybe so. Um, but yeah, this army is enormous, 44 units, and Nampo will definitely be captured on this turn. Ooh, and just like that, Churchill is now number two, but, um, don't expect... Oh, jeez, and another... Wait, another? Oh, is Beijing recaptured as well? Okay. Yeah, so Mao is getting his territory back, and with his big daddy to the north, he'll be able to start pushing into, um into Chinese, into Korean territory. So the ones who do not have the religion at all, the only one who does not have the religion at all is Ragnar. Ragnar is the only one who doesn't. Oh wait, and Korea. Korea doesn't, I don't think Korea has Islam in their cities at all either. It's kind of hard to see because this peach color is not the easiest to spot on the map. But yeah, Korea and, um, Korea and Scandinavia are the two that do not have the religion in their cities. Boy, what a twist! What twists and turns this game has prompted. Now we've gone from Mal being on the outs to Wang Khan now being in all, all kinds of trouble. That big stack still healing. Okay, this big stack healing, but like they'll almost certainly march on Pyongyang next. And we're at turn one. Wow, turn one fifty. Boy, the tech is going slowly in this game. No question about that. Surya Varman, if he's able to take over Korea, certainly will be the juggernaut for this game. He swayed his destiny, yeah. Oh, and, and Ragnar almost died to barbs, right? <laughs> Still hanging on there in the corner. So, let's look at the power, or overall bar graphs. Surya Varman in first. Churchill, a somewhat surprising second. Ragnar is in last, as expected. Surya Varman's in first by a mile, then Wang Khan. Food, Surya Varman's in first. Don't ignore the turn where he randomly starved himself for no reason. Um, Mal is low, but is, you can see, on the way, on the rebound. Churchill's hanging in there decently. Uh, yeah, Wang Khan has suffered major losses. Culture. Let's just check what their beaker rate is as well. Churchill, 150. Mal, 106. Ragnar, 83. Saladin, 84. Surya Varman 212, he's clearly the tech leader. Wang Khan only 80. Yeah, Surya Varman is definitely the tech leader right now. He seems to be the clear um, top power in the game. And he's gonna, only going to snowball that further if this continues. So we'll change up the music to Medieval because we're at turn 150. Mouse firing up the Chuka new machine as well. Is he? Did he pick up machinery tech? I see him. Yep, you're right, he did. Chuko News are really good. They're like, they're the only non-siege unit that has collateral damage. Yeah, I think there might be some stuff in super late game, but like the only unit in the normal part of the game. 
that's a non-siege unit to deal collateral damage. So um, really, really useful unit for applying the collateral and also being able to kill the unit too, unlike other siege units, which can't kill. All right, I don't know where this stack is going, but it does have seven catapults. Oh boy, oh boy. And Churchill declaring on Wang Khan, what? Oh boy, didn't see that happening. Well, Wang Khan looks like he is in fact gonna be the first eliminated. Yeah, Feeding Frenzy begins. It's not even a bad move by Churchill, who's in second place right now. Try to, um, try to capture some territory and rack up some mutual military bonuses with the other leaders. Um, you know, try to get on the good side of some of these other ones. <laughs> oh man, look at this. I'm gonna screenshot that. War with Churchill, worst enemy of Churchill. How do you become the worst enemy of Churchill? Seriously. Uh, Churchill's peace weight six and um, Wang Khan's peace weight eight, so they're pretty close. Now all we need is Ragnar and Saladin to pile in here. All right, so after wandering around in kind of a weird pathfinding route, Suri Varman did choose to go after um, Pyongyang, which is the holy city of Wang Khan's religion. Um, Mao will probably be getting a stack grouped up together sometime too, soon too, just because Wang Khan's gonna have to divert so many units to fight these three opponents. Great spy for Ragnar. Here comes Churchill's stack. Assign the commercy of Baghdad to... Oh, it starts. It begins. <laughs> it begins. The Apostolic Palace fun. There it is. Return a city to their rightful owner. <laughs> so he just assigns himself. Everyone else votes no. That's not true. Everyone else didn't vote no. Churchill voted yes. But yeah, he just takes one of his cities back again. <laughs> oh, there we go. Why am I not surprised that that happened? And Ragnar declares war too. Okay. Pile it on. Gotta get that war counter up, right? Poor, poor, uh, so we, now we get an even better picture here for poor, uh, Troll King. I know a lot of you guys love the Troll King, but um, this was not his game. <laughs> this was not his game. He hated everybody and everybody hated him. <laughs> Interesting that Surya Barman is friendly towards both uh, Mal and Ragnar because of the shared religion. He really likes Mal. Civics and um, religion at work there. Oh, Ragnar declared on Saladin? Oh. Okay, well that was weird. <laughs> I missed that one. You guys all pointed out. Okay. I just assumed he was attacking Wang Khan. So do they even have like open borders to reach each other? No. Obviously Saladin doesn't have open borders with Surya Varman. So there's really no way Saladin can... can re no, it's literally impossible. He can't reach Ragnar. Alright, well whatever. That war is irrelevant. Uh, more significant is this conflict with... That is a totally random war declaration. I'm not even going to pay attention to that war. Um, this is way more significant, though. So your Armin is starting to take control of this game. All right, here's Mal's stack. Not that impressive, but... Yeah, I don't think he has enough to take that city, even with the defenses re removed. He's going to have to add more units if he expects to capture that. So your Armin's on guilds as well, so... How about Churchill? Churchill attacked, but I haven't seen him doing very much in this. Did he, like, lose a stack or something? Uh, I guess he lost some units. Yeah, see, Wang, Wang Khan, is, his power's dropping precipitously. He's in a 3v1. I mean, it's it's really hard. And he's also up against the strongest Civ on the map in the form of um, Surya Varman, who's really seizing control of the game. Great library. Okay. I think this city's going to get taken by Surya Varman, unless Churchill gets lucky, which could happen. Destroying the evil Vikings. This has been a sad game for Saladin. He's been trolled super hard in this game. First attacked by Surya Varman, which didn't make a lot of sense, and now getting trolled by Ragnar. Just bizarre. Does not make a lot of sense. Really weird. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, I still don't think Mal is enough to capture that city. Not unless he brings up more units, which he might. We'll see. I mean, Choco News are pretty good, but he only has a couple of them there. Who's going to get Ulsan? No one on that turn. Uh, so some of the defenders did get killed here, but... Uh, all the attackers pretty much died, so... Pusan is still holding. Although it does only have two longbows. It's like the only actual defenders. Horse Archer and Huachas are not defensive units. Um, Ulsan looks like it's going to get captured, but maybe by Churchill? Well, we'll see. Churchill does move first. He has a shot here. What happened to Sergei Varman's big army? Did they, uh... What happened to all those units he had? Did they, like, attack and die? Yeah, it looks like he attacked and didn't succeed in capturing that spot. <laughs> Why is there an axe running around here? <laughs> Whatever. Sir Varman, when he gets guilt, that's gonna certainly make things a lot easier. Knights are way better than any of the units he has to attack with right now. So now maybe Wang Khan can turn and deal with Churchill over here. Looks like he killed a bunch of Churchill units. I mean, that protective... Oh, here they are. For some reason, these units ran way up here. Okay. For some reason, he, like, turned around and then ran over here. I don't know. AI pathfinding is bizarre sometimes. Certainly would be nice for Mal if he could capture another city or two in this war. Like, the spoils don't go to Surrey Marmon exclusively. Yeah, well, so much for capturing Pusan. Yeah, so the walls are closing in now on Wang Khan. He's almost fallen below Ragnar, and that's not where you want to be in this game. <laughs> you don't want to fall behind Ragnar and score. How many cities does Mao have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cities. Really would have been nice if he had picked up Pusan. I thought that he had a good shot to get it because Surya Varman was over on the west side. It's true, Mao did capture two Korean cities. He just needs to capture a few more, um, to be honest. Because I don't see him getting a lot more territory than this. This is a, like his golden opportunity to poach cities away on the back of a stronger um, neighbor AI. Churchill's got uh, a lot of catapults over there, but not much else. Note that Ragnar and... Um, Saladin won't start another war so long as they're in this war. So they're kind of prevented from doing much of anything right now by their completely bizarre and pointless war. It does seem unlikely that someone's going to catch Suri Varman right now. He is quite strong. <laughs> Alright, so Saladin will just be renominated as the leader. Alright, so this is better from Mao. He's got a decent stack here. The only problem is Suri Varman appears to be going for the same city. <laughs> Which would make it much harder. Berserkers, yeah. Still, we know it's kind of dumb luck who gets which city when they get next to it. Some City Raider 3 maces there on the part of... Um, on the part of Sir Yuharman. Yeah, it's a little bit unfortunate for Mal that Sir Yuharman didn't like, go over here again and just leave this city available for him to capture. Uh, so I would think that Suri Varman gets this, but there's a shot for Mal to get it, because it does kind of come down to the dumb luck of who attacks in what order. Looks like Suri Varman moves first, followed by Mal. Can this... Mal did get a wonder. Still, Suri Varman has more total units, so he is more likely to be the one to capture it. Yep. Like I said, not surprising. But it certainly would have been better for Mao if he had taken over these some of these spots. Like it is weird that Surya Varman, so he attacked this city, then moved here, didn't capture it, then went over here, and then moved down here. Just a weird pattern. Like Mao would have taken that city if Surya Varman had been off capturing Seoul, for example. 
But yes, Surya Varman is definitely getting out of control. Remember, Surya Varman still hates Saladin, so he will definitely go back to war with Saladin at some point. And that would get him pretty far towards domination already. Okay, I'm glad that that totally pointless war is over. Will Churchill be able to get one city for his troubles? You would think he'd be able to get one, but who knows. Excuse me. Um, Mal's units are still in this city. Boy, Sir Marmon is really getting out of control. He might have gone to upgrade his own troops. That's possible. He may have pulled back to upgrade. I could see that. Churchill has been completely useless in terms of attacking. He has done nothing except throw away units in this war. <laughs> He's been... Like, his entire civ versus one city for Wang Khan, and his entire civ has not managed to capture that city. Yeah, there's, so there's 26 units on the part of Surya Varman here, 12 for Mal, then another dozen or so coming back. All right, yeah, great, thanks. Good good war, Churchill. You, you didn't capture any territory at all. Uh, that said, this city, Ulsam, looked go over to him after the war is over because his culture is... Um, he did culture bomb this city, so his culture is going to extend out here. So he'll probably get that city when the war is over, just because his culture is so strong there. So now we're just basically waiting for the attacks to finish off. <laughs> Poor Wang Khan. And of course, we've still got Ragnar in the game to do silly stuff. I'm kind of curious about who hates Ragnar. So this is how people feel about him. Churchill doesn't like him. Saladin hates him. Um, but Mal and Suri Varman are friendly with him, largely because of um, religion. Might not maintain itself into the late game, though, if one of them goes free religion. All right, so yeah, we're just seeing Surya Varman literally dismantle <laughs> Wang Khan. <laughs> he gets all those great military instructors. Plus the, oh yeah, he has the berets for the free food. And Stonehenge, although that's too late to matter now. So yeah, it looks like, it quite seriously looks like Saladin, or not Saladin, Surya Varman is going to get every Korean city. And that's turned him into this game's superpower. So I could sure use Mal coming in second in this game, which I think is in play. I have them in the reverse order and would score the small points for that. Mal completing Sistine Chapel, that's kind of interesting. That makes it um, a lot less likely that Surya Varman would win by culture. Might sound strange, but the AI really benefits from Sistine Chapel, and not having that will hurt... Um, any attempt that Surya Varman might want to do. I mean, it doesn't stop him from doing a cultural victory, but it does make it less likely he would go for one. They are splitting up to attack different targets here. Mal is going to the south, whereas Surya Varman is going to the north, so that's kind of interesting. We could actually have Mal get the kill credit, which would be undeserved for the most part. I mean, semi-deserved, I guess, because he did defend against that attack, but... Uh, the city does not have walls, which is interesting, because that means that the defenses will go down quickly to those trebuchets. Uh, it's the city walls that make it take forever to bombard down the defenses. So I think Mal's going to get a random city down here. Close up of Seoul so you can see the unique building. Okay. Right there. Alright, so... Alright, so Surya Warming gets the kill credit, because if you notice, first Cheju got conquered, then Ulsan. I, I know that was just by virtue of Mal moving first in the turn order, but um, Surya Warming does get the kill credit. Alright, so... Wow, uh, uh, Wang Khan was the first to die, as many of us predicted. He was a, the first to die, I think, by a Something like 40 to 50% of the people. So, good effort, Wang Khan. Unfortunately, P. Suede, his destiny, strikes again. And just couldn't turn it around. He, he legitimately was playing a fantastic game. But Surya Varman just got too strong. And the 2v1 was not enough to be overcome. 
All right, so let's mark this on the spreadsheet for you guys. First eliminated Wang Khan. No more trolling for him. I mean, he played certainly played a much better game than Ragnar, even though he was the first to be eliminated. Let's see how many people had that. So we have like 175 predictions, and we had 340. So 68 people had it. Like I said, somewhere between a third and a half of the people had that. All right, so Wang Khan first to go. This was turn 185. Yeah, kind of a late first elimination. Turn 185. And we got to give the kill to Surya Marvin, as mentioned. All right, on we go. Five, for, five sieves remaining. They're not all going to survive to the end of this one, believe me. Yeah, hoping Ragnar would attack him early in the game. No, nope. Ragnar had... Ragnar had bigger problems on his hands in this game. All right, so I am happy to see that Mal's score is close to Churchill's score, and he, there's a good chance he'll pass him here. We also need to check the de overall diplomacy to see how everybody feels about everybody else. Although Churchill is, as I said, going to get that city, almost certainly, because it is swallowed up by his culture. Will probably be gifted over. Uh, let's see. So, diplomacy. Okay, so let's look at Surya Varman first. He's the most important. Friendly with Mal, won't attack him. Friendly with Ragnar, won't attack him. Does not like Saladin. Also, only cautious with Churchill. So those are, I mean, Saladin is by far his most likely target. Doesn't love Churchill either. Mal's cautious with Churchill, cautious with Saladin, friendly with the other two. Ragnar's also, so we got a three Civ block that will not attack each other. Um, Mal will not attack, none of the three Jewish leaders will attack each other. Saladin likes Churchill but hates everybody else, and Churchill is pleased with Saladin, cautious with the others. Okay, so I think it's pretty clear. We've got a Jewish block going on here, and they will not fight each other, and they are probably in position to dominate the game. That would be the most likely result, is those guys... Uh, dominating. It is pretty close between Churchill and Mao. However, Mao is magically protected from uh, Surya Varman, while Churchill is definitely not protected from Surya Varman. I'll advance another turn or two to get them kind of like out of war mode. And then we'll check to see like where people are on the tech tree. Look at the bar graphs. Well, look, look, we can look at the bar graphs at turn 200. Yep, no surprise. Liberated Ulsan. I thought that that would happen because it was so crushed by English culture. So Churchill does get a city out of that. And that means that Mao is not going to pass him in score unless something happens to Churchill. Okay, that was a long inner turn. So that was why I was kind of hankering on who captures these cities. Because like if Mao had managed to capture Wansan, um, he would probably be higher than Churchill in score. Hi, Great Mephisto. Looking good for your picks. You have Surrey first, Mal second. War Monger Block likes each other too much for a domination win, and Surrey goes space. Yeah, I can see that very much being in play. That said, if Surrey Roman runs over the other two um, sieves, I think he actually does get enough for domination. So that's also in play. Certainly, it looks like Surrey Roman is kind of a lock to win at this point. He is very, very strong at this point. Let's, all right, so let's go ahead and look at where people are on the tech tree. Good time to do that. All right, so Churchill, he has basically finished the medieval era, although he's missing theology. Going for military tradition right now, does not have gunpowder. Mao, similar place on the tech tree, uh, almost identical place on the tech tree. He's like one tech behind because he's on philosophy. Very, very close to one another. Uh, Ragnar is further behind. He still has some medieval tech to research. He's got the top of the tree still to do. Saladin is, again, similar to the place where Mao and Churchill are, just a little bit further behind. He's missing, he's missing this um, naval text at the bottom and alphabet for some reason. And then um, Surya Varman should be ahead. Yeah, but not, not really. He's basically in the same place as Churchill. So no one's really too far ahead or too far behind right now in terms of their um, current spot on the tech tree. Now that's it. that doesn't mean that that's where they are in terms of beaker output. Churchill 300, Mal 207, Ragnar 200, 
Saladin 167, Sri Roman 341. Yeah, well, not. I mean, Sri Roman's the tech leader, but not by a ton. He should pull further ahead, though, once he gets time to integrate all his Korean conquests. Unless there's more warring, of course. Trying to see if someone looks like the, you know, Sir Roman might be plotting more. He's building a lot of units. He's also got Taj Mahal under production, but he is building units. I mean, if he goes after someone, it's almost certainly going to be Saladin, who he does not like at all. Would be funny to see him go after Churchill. <laughs> he is only cautious with Churchill. Mal's building units, too. Building some knights, at least. Ragnar makes more beakers. Uh, yeah, he was temporarily, at least. I think Mal has the better economy overall. But uh, on that particular turn, he was making more. So everyone's kind of like transitioning from the medieval era into the renaissance era right now. Churchill's finished nationalism. So Roman's going to get the Taj Mahal, though. I'm curious who was the mausoleum. I'm sure it was built, and I just didn't see who finished it. All right, Arabia has the mausoleum. Okay. Very valuable wonder for the extended golden ages. It's true that Ragnar is financial, so he does get the financial bonus on uh, water tiles and also on tiles like this at his capital. And Sri Roman did finish the Taj Mahal. So now he's in Golden Age mode and he's going to race ahead of the field. Also looks like he just declared war on Saladin because I, I saw his units in enemy territory. All right. Bye, Saladin. <laughs> Not to put too fine a uh, detail on it, but uh, he's got very little shot because Sri Roman's way ahead. 111 units in that stack. Sheesh. Oh my god. <laughs> well, nice knowing you, Saladin. <laughs> I was like, well, okay. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised at all if these are, if like Mao and, um, well, Mao's pleased now with Churchill. Interesting. Did Mao go to free religion or something? No? Okay. Where's he getting the big, oh, the mutual military, got mutual military struggle bonus. How about Ragnar? He's cautious. Poor Saladin. Well, nice knowing you, buddy. Poor guy. I actually think he's a pretty good leader. I mean, not a great leader, but by like the standards of this game. Yeah, he can save himself with Apostolic Palace. That's true. Um, but he's going to have to survive. But like the problem for him is there was just a vote in the Apostolic Palace, so the next vote's not for like eight more turns. And he might not have much of his sieve left after eight more turns. So that's kind of the problem there. All right, 200 turns in. Okay. Can he reach Ragnar? <laughs> All right, well, I guess that ticks up our war counter. It's uh, also not going to please Mao or Surya Varman very much because they're going to rack up that you declared war on our friend, Malice. Where's... Uh... Yep, yeah, see? You declared war on our friend. And Mal's going to feel the same way too. You declared war on our friend. Um, yeah, so what the heck was that? <laughs> Does Churchill even have a stack somewhere? Can he even reach that spot? Does he have open borders? Okay, he has open borders. Anyway, well, we'll keep an eye on that, but um, we'll see. Because the big doom stack... Is, all right, big doom stack is still back here. Oh, we do have the ballista elephants. I guess I should say that unit. Normally they have the blue coloring, but they're wearing yellow today because we swapped up the coloring for Surya Varman. I think the main focus has to be on this war because Surya Varman's got the monster stack. <laughs> You see how long it took all the knights to ride up there? It took forever just to move all the units. Um, I am trying to see if Churchill has like a stack somewhere. 
but I don't see one. I don't really know why he declared war there. Oh well. Looks like Surrey Roman's heading back to the playoffs. Yeah, it does certainly appear that he's going back to the playoffs after this one. He's had some rough luck the last couple of years, but I do think he's a above average AI for AI survivor purposes. I don't know if we looked at the other non power bar graphs, so if you're curious, so Surrey Roman's in a golden age. Reflects the fact that before the golden age, he was not that high. Uh, golden age again, food, okay, yeah. Where is the Apostolic Palace? I believe it's in this city here. Uh, no, it is not. Then it's probably in the capital. Okay, it's in the capital city. So it's in Mecca, not in Medina. Yep, if Surya Barman rolls over um, Churchill, it's basically over. I think he would win by domination. Also, so much for my prediction that this would be a long game. That is not has not been the case. Oh, here's Churchill's stack. It's not that impressive, honestly. They're like running around in um, in Khmer territory. So yeah, mostly I'm watching just this giant stack to see if it's going to be enough to capture Mecca before I, I, before the next Apostolic Palace Stop the War vote can be held, which you know is coming. It's also like a little side force up here. Oh. So Mal's coming to the aid, aid of his friend here, declaring war on Churchill. That's somewhat more interesting. Although Mal's supply lines are pretty long here. Um, this city, Cheju, is in some potential danger. That said, Churchill does have his military off in, uh, off here. And Mal's military is slightly higher. Now that said, Churchill, if he goes, we should look at the text of what they got. Like, so Churchill... He is picking up military tradition, and he's about to get gunpowder, so that will unlock the Karasir units. Whereas Mao, I don't believe, has... Yeah, Mao does not have those units, and he's a ways away from them. He's going after the economics Greek merchant, which he is going to claim, because Sergei Varman's way up at the top of the tech tree at Democracy. So Mao's going to get the Great Merchant, but he's going to be fighting with outdated units, technologically. Does Sound have enough votes left to force an AP resolution? It's a good question. I feel like Mao is just, again, well, there it is. That answers our question. Stop the war. We're about to find out if he has enough votes left to stop this war. Let's see. He's certainly going to vote in favor of it. Uh, it succeeded. Yes, he did have enough votes. He, um, he didn't have enough on his own, honestly, but he got Churchill and Mao to vote for it, too. So for the moment... He is able to use the AP cheese to save himself. Um, but he didn't have enough votes on his own. Like I said, it required getting votes from two other AIs to do it. Well, really just Churchill. Mal didn't have enough votes to make a difference, but he got Churchill to do it. This does, of course, free up Surya Varman to attack Churchill if he wants. Although, given how much... Because he is only cautious. Or it also opens it up for Mal or Ragnar to say, Hey, we're at war with this guy. Can you join us in our war? Oh, here's another. Okay, this appears to be Mal's main stack. No clue where that's going. Uh, I fear that Mal has largely just given this city over to Churchill by declaring war, because I don't think he has anywhere near enough units to hold that spot. Although he turned back to apparently defend it. At least it's easy to see where the Chinese units are on the minimap, right? The little red dots. Definitely makes that easier to see. Can we establish that the human player will defy stop the war resolutions? No, I don't. I mean, I don't like them, but I do think it's part of the game that they, uh, the Apostolic Palace has an influence on diplomacy like that. 
we certainly wouldn't change the rule. I, I understand you asked like in future seasons, but I still don't think that we should necessarily do that either. Just because as much as the Apostolic Palace is annoying, I do think it's part of the game in that sense. Like we don't allow the victory because that's absurd. Here's that other, the main Mal stack over here. And it looks like Mal was able to push back that attack. Um, I'm curious if Ragnar is going to send units down here. I know Ragnar is pretty weak, but like he does still contribute units. He might just be gathering them right now. Little Ragnar stack somewhere. It's a fair question to raise, though, and it is something we can discuss after this season's over. Where is... Alright, there's that... Like I said, there's the main Chinese stack over here. It's not enormous. Only about 20 units in it. I'm not sure where Mao's going. Probably for Hastings. That seems to be where his forces are heading. I don't know why he wouldn't head for Ulsan first, but... Like I said, that seems to be where he's heading. With his kind of random forces here. He is notably higher than Churchill in power. The biggest thing is Mao... Um, does not have gunpowder units at all. Whereas Churchill, I believe, is going towards redcoats right now. Well, he's going for printing press. No, no, never mind. He's going for democracy. Ugh. So he won't have redcoats for a very long time. Is Sir Roman stack stuck in Medina? Yes, yes, it is. He has 108 units stuck in this city. <laughs> yes, it is. Good question, Sleeping Dragon. <laughs> 108 units stuck there. I mean, he'll declare war eventually to get them out, but uh, it is amusing for the time being. Um, Churchill is suffering a fair amount of pillaging. Like, there are units kind of running through China, um, England and tearing up part of these tiles. Mao went into a golden age. I hope that his research time is... Yeah, alright, so he is running some gold for upgrades. I was going to say, I hope he's running some gold because otherwise nationalism five turns in a golden age is not very impressive. Yeah, I'm still not quite sure what Mal is doing with his forces. Now they're over here. As Churchill goes into a golden age. So Harman finally went for liberalism, I guess, because no one else was going for it. He should be the first to discover liberalism. I'll have to see what he actually decided to pick up. Let's see. I'm going to guess astronomy. No. He already had that. What did he pick up with it then? I have no idea. Democracy, maybe? I don't know if he already had that or not. Probably democracy. Because that is, is the most expensive tech available. Mal read his history and wanted to prevent the opium wars. So anyway, yeah, there's these wars going on, but they haven't been too consequential. But here comes Ragnar with his knights and war elephants and trebuchets. He's going to go for Ulsan, I think. Assign the commercial city of Medina to Saladin. Oh boy. He's going to just AP cheese the city right back to himself again, isn't he? <laughs> that, that's so stupid. I'm sorry. <laughs> Succeeds. All right, so he just gets his city right back again. I mean, it's down to size one, but still, come on. And now he's going to ask for, I was going to say, now he'll probably ask for Baghdad back again, too. Uh, maybe replaceable parts, also a possibility. So yeah, Mao has not captured any cities. He has been pillaging... Churchill pretty good, and now Ragnar's on the scene, and uh, the city's not really very well defended, so Ragnar has a surprisingly good chance of actually capturing this, with Mal just like running stacks around for no reason. Maybe next season give the Observer Civ the AP, <laughs> just so the AIs wouldn't build it. We'll see. As you said, you could also just defy every resolution that's 
Um, or as you said, just give it to the AI, just give it to the observer sim at the very beginning of the game is also a possibility. We'll have to think about doing that just because that would also mean we don't have to put a second observer into the game. And that would save a little busy work there as well. It's something we can definitely think about. Um, I think the city is actually going to be captured by either Ragnar or by one of these random wandering. Um, yeah, wow, Ragnar getting it done. He's saying, Barbarian this. I'm a Civ, I'm a man. <laughs> and anyway, it looks like Mal is also hitting the top of the tech tree and is not going for military units right away. He even founded his own religion. Oh, okay, well that's bigger news. <laughs> oh, that's bigger news. Sir Marvin's declared war on Churchill. Okay, well, nice knowing you, Churchill. <laughs> so, um, how much territory does Churchill have? Churchill has about 19%, and then that plus Saladin's 14% would probably get him over the domination limit. I'm not certain, but I think it would have a good chance of doing so. <laughs> and people just putting the F in chat for pay respects to blank. Uh, so where's the big Surya Marmon stack? Here it is. Well, at least he got his big 108 unit stack back. That was one thing the AP did. He got his, his, big, <laughs> his big stack of units back. Um, so here's the other thing. By capturing Churchill cities, so your Harman will pick up enough population that the AP will not be able to block his future wars. Um, like, he'll have enough population that he will be able to block any AP resolutions, because he, he's going to cap... It's like, it was Churchill that made that resolution happen. There wasn't enough votes on Saladin by himself to um, make that resolution happen. So, long-term planning here. Can't attack Saladin directly, go after his ally. Although I guess he could do stop the war against, um, he could do stop the war against, Ch oh no, he can't do stop the war against Churchill. Churchill's free religion. He can't do that, even if he wanted to. So yeah, kind of a, a cunning plan here to go after um, the ally. 118 units there. She's Oh no, Churchill went to theocracy. Now he's back in Islam again. So now the AP is back on the table, potentially. I guess there's not enough siege units there. Only three trebuchets, yeah, so that could take a while. Yeah, going back into theocracy does mean um, we could see the, another stop the war. Although I think stop the war would only function for one of these sieves, not all of them. Could be wrong, but I think it... Well, we'll see. Not looking forward to the next AP vote. <laughs> Because the only reason Churchill survived his, his uh, opening round game, he 100% would have died, but he was saved by the Apostolic Palace a bunch of times. Baldric defected the Surya Varman. Where is that? I don't know what Baldric... I'm not sure what this means. <laughs> is that a city? Is that a Viking city or something? You'll have to put it in chat uh, explaining Bernadette. I... I was trying to follow that, but I wasn't able to. Oh, it's declare war on Ragnar. Oh, boy. It's a character. Okay. Declare war on Ragnar. Oh, my God. <laughs> this could be crazy. <laughs> I have not watched Blackadder, no. Uh, this could be interesting. So, yeah, Surya Marvin, unlike everyone else who's avoiding rifling, is, well, he avoided it, too, but now he's finally getting there. I mean, look, he did his best to avoid it. He went to democracy and corporation first, but now he's going to unlock rifles and calves. Oh, boy. This would be very interesting if it forces the other leaders to declare on Ragnar, which would then result in his elimination, almost certainly. All right, let's see. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Succeeds. <laughs> you have declared war on Ragnar. Mal voted no, Surya Varman voted no. Churchill plus Saladin had enough to force it, though. Oh boy. Alright, so who does that mean is at war with Ragnar? Mal has declared on Ragnar and Surya Varman and Saladin. Oh boy. There goes our, our war declaration counter. No! 
three more. Oh, I was looking good for 12, but adding three more like that is just blown it wide open. Okay. Well, it's nice knowing you, Ragnar. <laughs> I mean, there, there will definitely be more war declarations. That said, this does mean Sri Varman to win by domination gets a heck of a lot more likely. <laughs> it's going to help uh, Churchill in the short run. That's, that's for sure, because he was about to get killed here. So that was bizarre. I mean, it's not going to save this city here. But like, here comes the, here comes all the units flying out on the part of uh, Surya Varman, who just finished uh, Spiral Minaret and is about to finish Statue of Liberty and just completed rifling. So he'll be able to upgrade all his units. That does mean we don't see a stop the war resolution, though, because you did initiate a big war. This city is so toast. Once units get up there, rifles, cavalry, oh boy. The cavs are just going to run wild over the rest of the field. And of course, Churchill is still at war with all these other civs. It's just they're also now at war with Ragnar. Like this city got it. Oh, this city got attacked and managed to hold out. Mao was sieging this one up. Didn't manage to finish it off. I mean, Mao is ahead of Churchill in score, but not by a lot right now. All right, that will help because that knocked Churchill's score down by a good portion. Great general born. Oh boy. And finishes the Statue of Liberty too. Okay. Yeah, he's uh he's gonna win this game. <laughs> There's not a lot of drama about that at this point. <laughs> rifle. But like I love the rifle just like randomly walking up and attacking this city because it's you know, it's defended by longbows. <laughs> just like, yep, I'll go ahead and take that city, thank you very much. So he's at 35% land area. He's got a long way to go. But like, once, I mean, he's going to get Ragnar's territory. That seems pretty certain. Um, this city is going to be recaptured by somebody from poor Ragnar. Probably, possibly Mao. I think Churchill is like really uh, weak at the moment in terms of power. Yeah, look at Churchill. He has almost no units left right now. Because he picked up he ended up in a fight with Surya Varman. And of course Surya Varman is still at war with him. It's a real mess down here in this area. Arabia trying to get this city. I'm not sure where the main Chinese force is. Um Boy, everybody's tech rate is just awful in this game. Oh boy, look at all the unhappiness. I think that's part of the reason why. A lot of war weariness. Um, it is still theoretically possible for Churchill to get back into second place if he can retake some of these cities, like Nottingham or recapture Ulsan. Um, but he's just... Very weak right now. Oh, here comes all... Okay, here comes the new Chinese forces. Meanwhile, up here in Scandinavia... Boy, that Apostolic Palace War Declaration was crazy. I mean, that's part of the reason why we keep the AP in the game, because we do get just wild results like that sometimes. And that does make it... does create more entertainment to have just wacky stuff like that popping off occasionally. Will Churchill die before Ragnar? Uh, I actually think Ragnar dies first. I think it's just a matter of time until we see the assign the commercy of Baghdad to Sano. Oh, Jeez, here we go again. So again, just like every city getting reassigned. Crazy. <laughs> Mao goes police state. Well, his his tech rate will be even worse now, <laughs> but he will get units out faster. Churchill appears to be going for military science, which is a little weird because you'd think he would go for his redcoats. Oh, Mal picked up that city. Not that it's very valuable, but he did pick it up at least. 
succeeds again. Churchill and Saladin working together. Really, really annoying. So all the results of that war were just overturned. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Where are all the, um, where's the big stack of Khmer units? Because we know Khmer's got a monster army. Where are they? Like, I'm trying to look for where it might be. I thought it was repositioning to go up north, but I, I can't seem to find it right now. I don't know. I can't find it. I'm looking around the map. I don't want to spend too much time searching for it. Oh well. It'll show up sooner or later, I suppose. Mal seems to be ignoring Ragnar and just concentrating on Churchill. Like I said, it's a shame that he hasn't tech to more advanced units. He is on military tradition, so he will be able to upgrade his knights into Karasir. Look at this dude. He is not popular. He's <laughs> at war with almost everyone right now. Yeah, I still can't figure out where the big Suri of Armin army is. It's got to be somewhere. Because he has overwhelming military power. Whatever. It'll show up eventually somewhere against either an uh, English city or against a Scandinavian city. Somewhere. Like, this city is defended by a longbow and a horse archer. A random cab almost captured it. Didn't, but it came close. I mean, it's defended by a horse archer, so Saladin could freaking capture it with his camel archer. All right, it was reinforced, so that did not happen. With F... Well, actually, you can't. See? You can see his units for some reason. I'm not sure why. Oh, maybe it's because I still have enough great spy points. Anyway. Did I lose bar graphs on Surrey Barman? Is that the reason why? Nope. Oh, I think I don't... I think it's because I don't have enough espionage points. I guess I could um, dump some more great spies in and see. Although that wouldn't be fair because then I have to add them to everyone because of the way the AI runs the espionage slider. So we'll just leave it alone for right now. I mean, again, they'll show up sooner or later somewhere. Okay, so Ragnar was able to get peace with Sir Yvarman and that allows him to survive overall. Good suggestion, even if it didn't work out. I'm a little shocked that Suri Warman didn't just roll right over him. He did take one city, though. So that means that it should be just a matter of time until Suri Warman... Oh, here it is, here it is. Finally found it, here. 121 units. Okay, so now it should be a matter of time until he rolls over Churchill. Or you would certainly think so. Hastings certainly seems to be the next target. That said, it did break um, the little friendly setup that these guys had going, right? Yeah, see, Mal's only cautious with Ragnar now instead of being friendly. Um, Suri Varman's back to being friendly, though, but Mal is not. It's, it's a little strange. I guess it's because Mal doesn't care very much about religion. That's like his thing. He doesn't care much about religion. 123 units. So this is this is the stack right here. That tile. That's the big doom stack. Uh, let's see. Mal's on printing press. Is he going for rifling? Yes, he is. Very slowly, but he's going towards rifling. Whereas Churchill... Churchill's going for steel. I mean, cannons are nice, but I would think you'd want r rifles, especially because Churchill gets redcoats, his unique unit there, and redcoats are quite good. Oh, well. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. At least not immediately. Churchill against Saladin. Yeah, awful lot of red. 
I mean, Mao's stacks are a lot smaller. Mao has like 20-ish units in this region, 25 units. Sri has 125 units. And he has much qual higher quality units, too. I think Mal just signed peace, because all his units vanished. Yep. So Churchill is still hanging in here, somewhat surprisingly. Um, Suri Roman, oh god, Suri Roman has one trebuchet. If he had no trebuchets, he would just attack and capture the city. He has 31 rifles on this tile, 123 units. He has one trebuchet. He has 57 cabs on this tile. If he did not have the trebuchet, he would just attack. But because he has one siege unit, he will not attack and he will start bombarding. 3%. 3% of the city's defenses reduced. Oh boy. Well, an early end of this game does not appear to be in the offing right now because this game is thanks to Apostolic Palace shenanigans and um, Suri Warman not pressing his advantage home. The game is taking longer than it honestly should. Oh, I guess that's right. Saladin is still at war with Arabia. I forgot about that. I forgot that Saladin is still fighting him. <laughs> Whoops. So that still conflict is still going on. Yeah, I kind of feel like this, but not like this. <laughs> A little indicator. Oh boy. It's like, Sir Army man, why don't you just build some more units? Like, he's just stacking calves, but he already has way more calves than he needs to capture this city. Oh, apparently, um, Mao got a city in the peace treaty. He got Warwick over here, which is not connected to the rest of his territory. So he apparently got a city in the peace deal, which is kind of interesting. So anyway, the game grinds on. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right, Mal is still at war with um, Ragnar. That's You're completely correct, I forgot about that. So now Mal's going to go up there and attack him. Huh. Might make it harder to win by domination for um, Suri Varman. If he's not... Well, his culture is strong enough, he's probably going to get most of these cities regardless. Oh, okay. So he did finally just attack. I had stopped watching because I assumed he wasn't going to attack, but I guess he finally just said screw it and decided to attack. All right, good for um, good for uh, Sir Yarman. He, by the way, this city being surrounded on all sides is going to make it tricky. Uh, well, maybe, maybe he'll be able to hold the city. We'll see. But Khmer borders are going to surround that on, like three of the four. Yeah, okay, maybe not, <laughs> maybe not. Like if Nidoros is captured, it's going to be so swamped by. Khmer culture that it's going to be very hard for anyone else to hold that. Similar story for Bjorgvin up there. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I had forgotten that Mal was still at war with Ragnar. Oh boy. That's why Mal disliked Ragnar, because he was still at war with him. Forgot about that. One of the defense is still getting chipped away here at 3% per turn. Well, Mal's finishing rifling, so he's going to have calves any second now. And this, oh boy, same thing, one trebuchet again. I think Churchill must have Chichen Itza in one of his cities. He also has the Statue of Zeus as well. Yeah, Chichen Itza is in York. So that's part of the reason why Churchill's taken forever to get killed. Churchill did pick up steel, so we'll see what he goes for next. Rifling is probably what he would go for next. Stop the war against Churchill. Oh, here we go again. Stop the war against Churchill. <laughs> and just using that apostolic palace to save people again and again. 63 calves on this tile. So they voted it through again. <laughs> Stop the war amongst yet another yet another war ended with the AP. God, this thing is so annoying a lot of the time. It's just like it. I don't know. Like on the one hand, it's cool that we get the fun and unexpected stuff, like everybody declaring war on Sal on Ragnar. So like to a certain extent, 
yeah, it's kind of entertaining in that regard, but it's like, Jesus Christ, building one wonder should not make uh, Saladin and Churchill invulnerable for like two thirds of the game. Really crazy. Well, goodbye Ragnar, because these wars did not stop with Ragnar. Um, he's still at war with everyone except Sir Yvarman, so he is go a goner. It's like, sometimes we can't get these games to end until we tech all the way up to the United Nations because someone just literally shuts down every single war with the Apostolic Palace. We will have to think about just getting rid of the darn thing for next year. Because games like this are just absurd. One wonder should not have that big of an effect on the game. It, it's just crazy. Anyway. So it's not like Saladin and Churchill are doing well. They're getting crushed. But how much you want to bet that the next vote is reassign the city of Nottingham back to Churchill. And then it's like literally these wars didn't even happen. Reassign the city of Hastings back to Churchill. Like, <laughs> at least Wang Khan is dead, yeah. Um, but it's just like we, we, we watch these wars and like the AIs expend all this effort. And then it's just like, oh, nope, sorry, war stops. And then, oh, sorry, city goes back to the, the losing leader. <laughs> anyway, it's just, it's a little bizarre. Um, so this city is about to fall. There's not much left of it. We'll see if, and it looks like Mao is the one who picked it up. Again, I think that this territory is going to go over to, um, I think the territory is going to go over to Suri Warman in the long run because of his culture, but um, we'll see. Just like this city, yeah, has fairly high chance of revolt. <laughs> Poor Mal has not been able to pick up too much territory as a result of his wars because everything he gets is like controlled by the culture of someone else. Still, he's picked up some territory. Hi, Namakso. Return the city of Nidoros to the barbarians. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so this is the only place the wars are ongoing right now. Saladin was 100% dead until he got the AP to save him, and then Churchill was 100% dead until he got the AP to save him. Or technically, I guess, um, Arabia did it. I guess at some point, the leaders will get into free religion, like everyone will be in free religion eventually, and then that stops the AP as well. But the game certainly looked like it might be going to an early finish. Oh, well, that's, okay, that's pretty interesting. So you going to Confucianism. That's pretty significant, because now he and Mao are in different religions. Um, he's pleased with Surya Varman. Okay, so they're still pleased with one another, but they can both plot where it pleased. Now they are not guaranteed to avoid fighting each other. I still think there are other targets they would both much rather go after, um, but it's not guaranteed anymore that they can't attack each other. So that's pretty significant. Like, you would think Sir Roman would attack Churchill or Saladin over Mal, but it's it's not impossible for that to happen. Yeah, this city's really dead. <laughs> William the Conqueror, the Karasir, is in there. And Orville Wright, the great engineer. They're both going to be killed, though. Mal's just running over them with um, cavalry right now. This is a city that, that Mao will be able to hold on to, because there's no culture pushing on this one. Only two cities left for Ragnar. Yeah, I said that was going to happen. Not much left for him. Barring, again, some crazy AP religion nonsense. Actually, Nidalros. Yep, here it is. Again, see? Here it is. Assign the city. Right, all the conquests in war is going to be handed right back again. Where is Ulsan? Oh, this one. <laughs> Just hand them all right back over again. <laughs> Just, that's complete nonsense. Come on. Like, why is this in the game? It's so stupid. It's like, I do, as I said, I enjoy some of the things that the AP brings. I like some of the unpredictability, but this is just such nonsense. Like, these guys freaking lost the war, and then they just, because they have this religion in a, in cities that no one else has a religion in, suddenly they can just completely change the diplomacy of the game. It's totally insane. Like, this city clearly should not go back. Like, why would this magically go back to them? It's crazy. <laughs> 
because John Schaefer and Alex <laughs> Mantanzas are, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. I am starting to lean towards, for season five, we just put the AP in the Observer Sip on the first turn of the game and leave it at that. That way no one can build it, no one wastes production on it, blah, blah, blah. Because this is really dumb. <laughs> Can't wait for 10 turns from now when they assign another city back to Churchill. Anyway, I thought that Nidoros would not be able to hold here, but apparently the culture does not reach onto this tile, so Mal will probably be able to hold on to this one. We um, give AP to Sitting Bull and then sink him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, we can't change rules mid-season, but something to consider for the future. So we've got two sieges going on. I think on both sides, yeah, we could just attack and conquer the cities without doing the siege. There's one. So can Mal get over and get a kill credit? Or is it going to go very undeservedly to, um, to Saladin? Although I guess in some sense Saladin does deserve the kill credit because he's the one who engineered all this with the Apostolic Palace. So I guess to a certain extent Saladin would deserve the kill. <laughs> Uh, actually, no, Mal's going to get this, because look at all these calves in Karasir. He's just going to attack without bothering to bombard the defenses. Yep. So, Mal ended up taking those cities, and now we've got another small portion of China up here in northern uh, Scandinavia. Alright, so Vikings eliminated. The result of that AP vote was removing another sieve from the game. It's like, can you believe, it's like it would be pretty funny if the Wonders text reads, eliminate X other Civ from game. I mean, that's basically what happened there. All right, anyway, so Ragnar did not survive. I didn't think he would survive. Well, I thought he had a chance of surviving. When that um, religious block lined up, I thought he would survive, but it did not end up happening. So this is turn 274. Turn 274. And the kill went to Mao in this one. Mao's second kill. All right, on we go. So, now that the wars are, that round of wars is done, let's look at the diplomacy. Oh boy. Surya Varman, furious with Saladin, annoyed at Churchill. And Mal is annoyed at church. Well, he actually kind of likes Saladin, which is kind of weird. Mutual, oh, mutual military struggle, I see. No mutual, oh boy, look at the spying here. What the, why would you spy that much, Saladin? That's crazy. Your spy was caught causing trouble. Are all the crazy civs dead? No, I wouldn't say that. I don't know that I'd say that. Are all the crazy civs dead? Uh, Surya Varman's at 42% land area. If he takes out Arabia, he would be close. I don't think he would quite have enough if he took that out. He is on um, assembly line right now, though. So, or excuse me, um, he's building research in every city. But with him being furious, it does seem likely that he would attack at some point. Um, now he's canceled that to build factories, which makes sense. Those two Islamic civs have, I mean, in their defense, Saladin and Churchill have worked really well together. They've covered each other's backs. The only reason that they are still alive in this game is because they have been, uh, yep, there we go again, assigned Khmer City of Hastings to Churchill. <laughs> Seriously. Um, the only reason they are still in this is because they have worked together to save themselves. Yep, there it is, another city, gifted back over again. Unbelievable. Every single city taken in the previous war, except Nottingham, has now been gifted back. And I'm sure that in 10 turns, the vote will be to assign Nottingham back as well. So it's just like all the, all the results of the war were for nothing to have happened, because all the cities were just gifted over. <laughs> it's like killing Wang Kun caused a ground, Groundhog Day loop in the AP. Yeah. So Mal did give this city over, which makes sense. Oh yeah, this, this, these units are trapped because there's no open borders. So that gets him slightly closer to domination. But as we said, he still has a ways to go. I think the real solution is just to get um, 
something that will obsolete the UN or obsolete the AP, whether that's, well, maybe not. He's building research, not getting ready to declare war. Um, I really thought we were not going to get to a peaceful victory condition, but after, as a result of all those resolutions going through, maybe we do get to a peaceful victory. I don't know. Ragnar should be really mad given his fate in Season 2. I can't remember. Oh, there we go. Okay. Not surprising. I was. I could have seen him peacefully uh, go to the spaceship, but... Uh, no, not, not so much. Alright, so here we go again. Certainly no shortage of units. But he only has so much time before we know the Apostolic Palace is going to kick in again. So let's see how far he can make it before this war gets shut down again. Alright, well, that's one city down. He's got to make it to Mecca, because that's where the AP is located. Certainly the, I mean, in terms of actual power, it's not even remotely close. We all know that if this war is actually fought, Saladin gets eliminated, and it's not close. So the whole question is just, are we going to see a stop the war resolution interrupt it? Or yes or no? I think Damascus is toast too. Yep. It looks like Medina might have had a spy revolt or something. Either that or it was attacked with, like... Yeah, it might have been a Spy Revolt. Anyway, so that's two cities down. I mean, remember, every time that a city is captured, it is Islamic population, which is what the AP is attuned to. Um, it's Islamic population being taken away from Saladin and being gifted over to Surya Barman. So if he takes a couple more cities, he legitimately will have enough to block those Stop the War resolutions. Let's see. Boy, that's a lot of infantry, isn't it? This is the big stack here. It's 57 units. This this tile here is the big stack. Um, all that's left defending this city are catapults and trebuchets, so they're going to die really easily, as long as units just actually attack it. I guess one more rifle was put in that city. Don't be surprised if Mal joins the war, too. Yeah, now that the big stack is next to this city, it's it's pretty much toast. He is on mass media, so that's going to... Mass media is going to obsolete the um, Apostolic Palace soon, because that's going to force the UN to be built. Now, he stopped to bombard the defenses rather than just straight up attacking. Yeah, he's taking a little too long. Up oh, here it is. Here it is. Right on cue. Here it is. Stop the war against Saladin. Well, we knew that was coming. <laughs> the only question is, does he have enough pop to block that vote? I don't. I think this is going to be stopped. Honestly, we'll see though. Yep, there it is again. <laughs> we knew it was coming. We knew they were going to stop the war, and sure enough, there it is. Almost enough to block it. Um, needed a couple more cities though. <laughs> Everyone's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say that on stream, but you know. There it is again. Let's just stop the war again. I mean, this is the Apostolic Palace at its absolute worst. Its absolute worst. Wait, Mal voted, a, Mal voted yes as well? I don't understand that, but the AI, like, votes... The AI, like, votes yes for almost everything. Anyway, so on we go again. But the good news is the AP is going to be obsoleted very shortly because the United Nations is under construction. And as soon as the UN is built, it obsoletes the Apostolic Palace. It does not obsolete until Saladin gets mass media. So, oh, God, I think that's technically right. Um, so, like, Saladin benefits from being technologically backwards here because the AP is not um, obsolete. <laughs> So I think that's actually correct, by the way. UN only means we can't see the Apostolic Palace. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I think that's true. And, and remember, he can't declare war for 10 more turns. Um, because when you're, when you're forced into peace, you're forced into peace. So... 
All right, well, this is, could be important though. Churchill converted to a different religion, so he's no longer gonna be best buds with um, Suryavarman, or not Suryavarman. We do need to sink Sitting Bull soon. Um, they still have not met Sitting Bull. See, he's still not known, but we have to sink Sitting Bull once he becomes known. The UN could force everyone to free religion. That's absolutely true. That could happen. That would be a, a very nice result because I am very sick of these wars being shut down again and again and again. Um, it's not its not just because I have domination. It's just like, literally, this is not fair. Surya Varman deserves to conquer Saladin because he's like two eras ahead of him in tech. It is not fair that his wars just stop again and again and again because this wonder exists. A wonder which, by the way, if they actually voted based on population instead of population that has Islam in the city, he would easily be able to win these votes. Um, Anyway, it's just, it's really dumb. It's just a terrible, terrible mechanic. Really stupid. And it inflates the war count too, yes. It also causes the war count to be way higher than it should be. Um, I don't know, it just, it distorts the game by a ridiculous amount. And it is just dumb that one wonder influences the game that much. A game where only conquest is allowed would have some games lasting eight or nine hundred turns. Some of them literally would never end, so we can't we can't do that. Some games literally would just not end ever because the AIs won't declare war on each other. Anyway, so yeah, we seem to be back into a peaceful set setup again. All right. So now that the UN has been finished. We'll see it, what that swings in terms of things. So we need to get rid of uh, Sitting Bull because note that Sitting Bull has been introduced to everyone as a result of the UN being finished. So fa bid farewell, farewell to him. Bye, buddy. I hope you had fun down there in the ice. All right. And now we got to remove the AI, um, AI, AP religion, excuse me, from Delhi. And then we have to put the Holy City back because for some reason this removes the Holy City. This was the holy city here. Okay. All right. Exactly, as Link Mario Samus said. All right, so on we go. So certain this time now, Surya Varman controls the UN. Not surprising. I mean, Saladin only has 40 votes, period. He only has 40 pop in his entire sieve. That's it. And yet he's been able to control the entire diplomacy of this game. Now, I actually think if there was another war between these two, I think Mecca would be captured before the war could be stopped. Although I guess it depends on what the timing is. Oh, he just declared war on Churchill. Okay. Interesting. Will this war be shut down? Another war counter. I had 12, so now I'm going to be off on the war declaration counter because... Uh, largely because of all the um, AP enforced wars. All right, let's look at the bar graphs and see who's got. All right, well, that's about what we would expect. Mao was way ahead of Churchill in power. How are they in tech right now? We know Surya Varman's pretty far ahead. He still has a way to go for the spaceship, though. Like, he's not that close to the spaceship. Um, Mao has, he has steam power. He has most of the, in, uh, he has all the, almost all the Renaissance stuff. He does not have assembly line yet. That would be the next big breakthrough. He does have cannons, though, so that's kind of nice. Working on rails for machine guns, which are not an offensive unit, but they're pretty good defensively. Churchill still does not have rifling. Jeez, although he is heading there. We'll see how much progress Mal can make before um, rifles are on the scene, because he's gonna should be able to take the city of Oxford very easily. He had all the cannons right there to take out the defenses. And then he has cabs and rifles to be able to kill the medieval units that are defending. Now he's got to go back and reconquer the cities he already conquered earlier because of the AP. Although Oxford's a new city, that was not there previously. But like Ulsan and Hastings have to be reconquered. Now granted, Ulsan's defended by longbows, so I don't expect that to hold for too long. All right, so on we go. Oh, look at note the tanks running around in Khmer territory. Certainly would not be very difficult for um, Sergei Varman to take out. 
I mean, he might be he might be plotting war again because I see more tanks under construction. Could just be building them because they're new. To be fair, Siri of Armand had Hastings, not Mao. I guess that's true. Alright, global civic environmentalism this time. Would have global civic free religion would probably have been nicer. There's an awful lot of calves running around down here. Still, Mao's gotta get his units into like a cohesive stack. And we're on turn 300. Alright, so environmentalism succeeds, no surprise. The AI always votes for that kind of stuff. Alright, there's a lot of calves. So Oh, there we go. Well, that didn't take very long, did it? Both of them went down pretty fast. Um, you know, this is... The thing about this is Mal, if he takes this territory, it uh, it might stop Sir Varman from winning by domination. Now, Sir Varman is fairly close. I don't know if he'd have enough territory to win by domination, though. I guess we'll see. Um... There's enough calves here that they can probably just push right over Canterbury. Because there are 22 calves there. If they just attack, they would probably capture it. Yep. Sometimes it's better not to have siege units next to a city. That said, this guy uh, does not seem to be getting ready to declare war. I mean, he's going to pick up this city, I, I expect. <laughs> Never mind. I was wrong. I said he doesn't look like he's getting to ready to declare war, and then immediately declares war on the same turn. Whoops. Okay, my war declaration count. No! Gonna lose point. Losing points with every more war. No, no one's close to cultural victory at all. Suri Warman would have to turn on the slider to have any realistic shot. He would win by space long before he won by, by culture. Good question, though. Alright, so Churchill looks like he's on his way out. This will, of course, help Suri Varman get closer to domination. <laughs> Paratrooping units in. <clears throat> and then if he just runs over Saladin, the game's over. Because that would give him enough territory. I mean, geez, look at look at all these paratroopers he just dropped in. That's crazy. <clears throat> Suri Varman can hear me. Apparently he can. So yeah, I doubt Churchill has more than 10 turns left to live at this point. He might not even have five turns left to live at this point. He only has a handful of cities left. So if this doesn't end domination, I'm actually going to score pretty well here. I just need it to last slightly longer because I had a relatively late finish date. I had turned 340 here. But if it doesn't end domination, I'll do uh, pretty well on the scoring. I also, the longer this, the closer this gets to turn 340, the better for me. Now look at all those tanks rushing forward. <laughs> Newcastle, and Churchill's like, I finally got to Redcoats! And Sir Herman's like, that's very nice, I have tanks. Thanks. <laughs> anyway, with this much territory captured, there's uh, a stop the war resolution would not even succeed at this point. Universal suffrage, because um, at this point there's enough captured territory. Uh, Surrey Roman's at 55%. Like I said, I don't think he gets enough from taking the remaining cities, although the remaining English cities, although maybe. Could come down to whether Mao or Churchill gets, or Mao or um, Surrey Roman gets this last city. I think Mao gets it though. Um, don't be fooled by the paratrooper on this tile. It's mostly Chinese units next to Coventry. Yeah. Coventry was captured there. And then Sir Varman will finish this off in another turn or so. So this... Yep, yeah, well, I said Churchill wouldn't last ten more turns. He lasted like three more turns after I said that. So Sir Varman gets the kill credit as we have a double double kill on the same turn yet again. But Sir Varman went second in turn order, so Sir Varman gets the kill credit. Alright, and that's that. 56% land area. He's also just at the population requirement, too. So he probably has to declare war one more time, but I'm not sure. It's close enough that it's hard to say. All right, let's mark it in the spreadsheet first. Okay, so Churchill turned 307. All right, 
Churchill. He survived for a long time, but ultimately was removed. Oh, card. Not enough AP cheesing to survive, and Sergio Armin gets the kill. Again, Mal almost, it almost feels like Mal should get half of the kill for that. <laughs> It was, the final killing blow was delivered by Suri Varma. Alright. Yeah, no more wars. Alright, so let's see what happens here. Jeez. <laughs> Suri Varma's on satellites and Mao's on liberalism. Oh boy. That's a bit of a lead there. I just wanted to get past turn 315, because I score two more points if it's after turn 315. Instead of... Um, before turn 315. Alright, well, Surya Roman is furious towards Saladin. Mal's actually pleased with both of them. So um, the odds that Surya Roman does not declare war are pretty low. Uh, I, I feel like it is only a matter of time until he declares war and goes for the finishing blow here. I, I can't see him avoiding attacking a, a furious AI. 57% land area right now, with some cities coming out of resistance. Like, London will pick up some tiles. York and Newcastle will pick up a few. I don't think that's enough to get 4% more land area, but I could be wrong. He wants to kill Salivan so badly. I think he really does. <laughs> I mean, he's close on domination right now. Alright, they just voted for the same thing they'd already voted in. So London just came out of resistance, still 57%. Needs a little bit more there. York's going to come out of resistance here too. Yeah, honestly, it's kind of shocking that Saladin is still alive. 59% here. Wow, this is close. He's very close. Okay. All right, so we made it to turn 315. 60%. How, now, where is he at? Not Saladin. Sorry, Varman. He is at 60.05%. So he probably needs about 15 more tiles in order to finish this off. He does, ha and he does have the population requirement. So, um, like, I don't think that. Oh, and Mal just went free religion. Yeah. So there. I mean, he could technically attack Mal as well, and Mal could attack him, which would result in the game ending almost immediately. Um, yeah, I don't see this lasting a lot longer. It's really just, when is he going to declare war? I don't think borders expanding will be enough to get the domination win. If uh, he had taken Coventry, maybe. But, like, he's furious with the dude. I mean, come on. It's, uh, yeah, he just declared war, I think. Nope, never mind. I thought I saw units racing across on the minimap. I, my bad. I mean, we'll know it when the war starts. Like, we'll know it when it happens, because <laughs> you're going to see 100 units race across the border on the turn. Come on, dude. Do not take this out to space. <laughs> I have domination as my victory requirement. Please take the, Please just finish this off. Although, if you did it between, after turn 330, that would be pretty awesome. And he's still at 60%. So close. Where is he on the tech tree, out of curiosity? Alright, he's still got a fair number of techs left. He needs one, two, three, four. And that's assuming he doesn't go for advanced flight and stealth. I mean, he's building, like, tanks and cities. Again, we'll know it when he declares war. Like, if we could go, if you could go 10 more turns and then win on, like, turn 330. Oh, there it is. There it is! <laughs> so, yeah, this, this ain't gonna last much longer. I mean, it, the, the victory message is not printed yet, but you know that the war has started, because, yeah. Because you saw all those units racing over the border. All right, so that gives us one last war. 16 is going to be the finishing war amount. Just FYI for you guys. So at least I score one point there. Because I was within five. 
All right, um, let's see, how many cities can be captured here? Uh, unfortunately, Sal uh, Saladin is going to survive because domination is going to be triggered before. Because um, he needs, like, as soon as one city is captured, the game's going to be over. So I think Saladin does survive this. There we go, yep. As I said, as soon as one city gets captured. So turn 322 is the is our finishing date. Sa Suri Varman wins a domination victory. Mal second, Saladin does survive, despite all the shenanigans. All the shenanigans, he somehow survives. I don't quite understand how he is the one who managed to survive this. Yeah, uh, if I had gone just slightly earlier, I could have scored a couple more points. Oh well, I think I still did pretty well on this one. I'm going to write down the turn 322 before I forget. Turn 322. Um, and then I'll fill in the rest in a second, because uh, I want to do the replay first. Pick one. Okay, yes, I will do this. Afterwards, pick one more turn so we can watch him murder. All right, let's watch the replays. Oh, I can't wait to see the can't wait to see the the capital get captured by the barbarians. There it is. Mineros was captured by the barbarian state. Ooh, and this was a rough, rough opening for Mal. I mean, he was in all kinds of trouble in this one. Um, he was very far behind. So yeah, the, the whole early game was all about who could just survive the Barbarians. That was the only thing. Yeah, first confirmed survivor, correct. Saladin is the first one who was confirmed not to be killed. We were almost to the point where no one survived the opening rounds. Saladin is the only survivor of the opening rounds. Alright, so let's see, what do we have here? What's our first really big... Alright, so our first really big thing that happens in the game is Sergei Marman declares on Saladin, which was like a huge... What? Since the two of them have relatively close peace weight, but I think the fact that they had ended up with different religions was what swung it. Actually, he declared war when I don't think Suri Varman even had a, a religion at that point. But apparently he decided he wanted to go after Saladin. So, that happened. And then we had Wang Khan declare war on Mao, which looked really bad right up until here. Suri Varman makes peace with Saladin. And then right here, um, when it looks like Mao is about to be overrun. Where is it? We get this. Surya Marmin declares war on Wang Khan. The single most important turning point in the game. If that had not happened, Mal would have been eliminated by Wang Khan. And it's really an open question after that what happens. Like maybe Wang Khan becomes strong enough that he can like become a match for Surya Marmin. But it didn't end up happening. Instead, the, the war swings back with the juggernaut on, their, on uh, Mal's side. He is able to place... Um, be the second place person. The Robin to Surya Varman's Batman in this game. And then he's able to ride the coattails of Surya Varman for, for the rest of the game. I mean, Surya Varman is so strong at this point. He just, it's pretty much nothing people can do to stop him. Um, then we have the repeated wars that get stopped by the Apostolic Palace. Up until this, AP triggers a war on Ragnar. This causes him to get eliminated from the game. Very unfortunate fashion. I don't think he deserved to have that happen. But he gets conquered by Mao, mostly. Um, and then at this point, Mao plus Suri Varman are super duper strong, especially the Khmer. And it's just a matter of them finishing off their Islamic rivals, who have been stymieing them with the, uh, with the AP resolutions. So eventually they decide to go back and finish off Churchill, and they do. Churchill's gone, and then Saladin would be dead too, except that the game ends before he can be killed. And so there we go. Suri Varman wins a domination victory, and that's our finish for this one. Bar graphs are what you would expect. Um, so your Warman's ahead in everything. I wasn't looking at the bar graphs much at the end because we all knew what the situation was. So your Warman was way ahead. Mal was clearly second, and the others were so weak that they were functionally irrelevant by the end of the game. So there you go.